Yes, good evening. Sava here and Perchi from Football Heritage TV, joined by the Lightning lads from Tottenham Away. We have Stel and Will here, and we've also got Haz, who is putting up the good fight for South Ukoys. We asked the other two on before Haz, but the other two turned us down, so we <laughs> had to go with Haz in the end. Here he is. Um, I jest, of course. Welcome to Spurs Unleashed, brand new panel show every Thursday night, 8 p.m., 15-minute segments, five 15-minute segments about whatever the topics are for that week. We will discuss them. We will debate them. There will probably be arguing. There'll be crying. Um, Susie will be gushing over Will in the chat. <laughs> Other than that, um, no old bard. So get your comments in. Please like and subscribe. Like and subscribe to um, Tottenham Away. Subscribe to South View Coins as well. And subscribe to Football Heritage TV. First and foremost, Stel, how are we doing, man? You good? Yeah, good. Um, just bring on the weekend. Need some football now. It's dragging on again. So uh, looking forward to the football and uh, well done to Arsenal and Man United last night. Great. Great effort, guys. Great effort. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even got started and the jabs are flying in. Um, Will, yeah, it was it was nice, wasn't it, last night, Will, to see um, to see Arsenal go out in... Uh, I mean, they were battered, weren't they? They were, they were played off the park. Yeah, I mean, all, all, all of that depth that we keep hearing about for Arsenal is, 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 re is really great right now. Um, you know, yeah, so hey, you guys weren't, you know, Arsenal aren't contenders for the Caribou Cup and they aren't contenders for the league. So. Well, yeah, that remains to be seen. I mean, yeah, well, definitely not contenders for the Carabao Cup, just like us. Um, Hass, how are we doing, man? You good? Yeah, all good, all good. I'm excited to be part of this brand new show and obviously good evening to everyone on the panel as well and everyone in the chat um yeah i'm excited like still to um, bring on the weekend man there's just been not enough football for me when spurs ain't on it's just it's just different isn't it watching other teams play but yeah we need uh, more spurs we do indeed yeah after all the international breaks it's, it's pretty annoying that we've now gone into a 10-day gap in between crystal palace and chelsea but just so you know uh, everyone on the top has been put, we're doing it in hair order. The amount of hair you've got determined <laughs> in this pyramid. Um, and the guys down below want to make you think they've got hair by putting on their baseball caps. Um, so <laughs> well, it actually, is. Sava, actually, yeah. right, this wasn't planned, but we're all in black at the bottom with black baseball caps. We actually look like ultras. <laughs> 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 Spurs ultras, yeah, yeah, strong. I was going to say, we all look like oldish men in reality, but our little thumbnails in cartoon form, we look like quite a sexy boy band. So, you know, it, kind of, <laughs> it is what it is. Un unleashed. Um, We're called Unleashed. <laughs> unleashed, yeah. Oh, unleashed. We've released our new single for, for Christmas. Um, Let's get into it. First of all, uh, big up. We've got Manny Singh in the chat. We've got Trigger in the chat. BT is always here. Do as he says. Smash the like button. Susie, of course, is in the chat. The third member of Football Heritage TV. The unsung hero, should we say. Um, Tot Spurs, Mark Swift, Rico, Rob Belchar, Morton Barley, Mark Changot. There's lots of you in the chat. Um we might not be able to get to questions unless they're relevant. So please, um, uh, you know, please bear with us, but we will try and get to some comments at some stage. Um, guys, first uh, section that I want to talk about tonight is um, the news from Tottenham this week um, that Rob McKenzie has joined Spurs, um, or that should say has rejoined Spurs. Um, a lot of people not realising that he was with us back in 2015, 2016, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, was um, associated with the high, I don't know how much, but was associated with Sonny coming in, uh, Kieran Trippier, Toby Alavireld. Other signings for other clubs include people like N'Golo Kante, who I believe is quite a good player with quite a good CV. Um, Mares, another one you might have heard of him, not a bad footballer as well. So um, I want to talk about what, what does this mean for Spurs, guys? Take this in whichever tangent you want. What does this mean for Spurs? Too many, too many chefs in the kitchen. Not enough. Is it the right number? You've got Paratici as a consultant. You've got Johan Lang. You've got Postacoglu, who technically always works without directors of football and and and, and the likes. What, I'll start. I'll start with you, Stel. What, what does this look like for you? Is this a good thing? Is this is this Spurs finally putting a plan in place? Okay, so. <clears throat> I put a video out on our channel a while back saying <clears throat> I've been to 
the Spurs ground. I've met a new academy director. He's told us about the changes at Spurs. I explained how everything's positive. There's a structure, there's a philosophy, there's an identity. All these things people have been asking for. Postacogli was deliberately hired to match what the academy philosophy is. So the, hopefully the players have integrated into the first team. Everything's going in the right direction. And we had a brilliant, well, okay. We had a very good summer window, if you base it on all the previous years that we've had, okay? Yeah. Now, off the basis of that, I put this tweet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it to you. We had the best summer transfer window under Levy in 20-plus years. Since then, Munn and Lange have come in. Gabonini's been sacked. Paratici demoted. And now McKenzie has not. Why can't we just keep the system of people in place that gave us such a good summer transfer window? Why are we breaking this up? When I mean the hate that piled in on me for asking that question, literally, I got called every name under the sun, non-stop abuse. A couple of people have said, yeah, it does seem strange that we're breaking it up and whatnot. And then one person, literally only one said, I don't understand. Did nobody read your tweet? <laughs> anyway, anyway. For me, I, I do question why we've, why we're changing so much when everything looked like it was going so well. And I'm just wondering if we're, if we're shaking up the apple cart too much here. And if we're, we're bringing in too many people, head of recruitment, head, head scout, football director, chief executive, football director, senior yeah. officer to the director. It's just, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know, Sava. I don't know. He, he, he doesn't have a bad record, but then he, he didn't, last at Spurs when he was first there. So why was that? Um, why not bring back Paul Mitchell then if you're going to get the band back together? Or has that bridge been burnt? For me, I'm not against it, but too many cooks spoiled a broth. And I just feel when you have too many people, you know, if Paratic says, look, I think you should buy, let's just make up, let's just pick a player. I think you should buy Ollie Watkins. But then Lange says, no, I think I think Vlaovic is the better option for our philosophy. But then um, Scott Munn says, guys, are we not going to look at Victor Orban? And then you've got <laughs> um, someone else saying, but hold on. Uh, what what about if we make a cheeky bid for Messi? He's he's old. We know he's old, but we can get him for one year. Is that... What happens <laughs> then? What do you do? So I think, I don't know. For me, there's too many people getting involved at the moment. If he's coming in just to do video analysis and do a more technical job to support what's already been decided as the shortlist, then I get it. But if he's coming in to be another decision maker, mm. I don't know. I, I think it's getting one too many personally for me. Yeah, Will, how, how do you see it? Um, I mean, Par we know Paratici's there, right? We can't get rid of him or don't want to get rid of him, whichever way we look at it. Are, are there too many... Cooks. Some might say that's a good thing, but uh, it's still right. Is it going to be too many different people with different ideas on what do Spurs need to bring in and who's going to have the final say? How's this all going to work from your opinion? Well, I mean, since Stell took up 10 of the 15 minutes available, I'll keep it. <laughs> um, uh, look, it, for me, it doesn't matter. Like, could there be too many, you know, chefs or chiefs and not enough Indian shirt? Sure. Um, but for me, it's just simply. I don't care as long as we don't sign in down bellies, right? Or Brian Hills. Yeah. Um, I, I get you. We already, we already did. They're coming back. Yeah, They're no, back. but I'm just like in the future, as long as we don't sign any more. So yeah. look, for me, I'm always a wait and see kind of a guy. Um, I'm not excited by any of it, to be honest with you. I mean, unless Paul Mitchell's name's on that list, uh, I'm not really going to, I'm not excited about any of them, to be honest with you, and just have to wait and see. So. But, but look, there's that way of looking at it. I mean, Hass, I mean, look, the fan base is, you know, are getting very excited by this. And we're like, oh, my God, we finally got a plan in place. Are we getting excited without knowing a lot? I mean, I, I, I can't say I'm getting excited. I, I, I'll be honest, I don't really know enough about Johan Lang. Um, Mackenzie's a name that's just popped in in the last week. I haven't seen that name mentioned by anybody for the last three or four years when talking about adding in scouts. Where, where are you with this, Hass? Um, I, I do think there's some sort of plan in place internally. Um, we've seen loads of moves um, materialising over the last few months, especially since Anne's joined as well. But from what I can see, uh, Mackenzie was at Spurs previously under Pochettino, well, working 
um, under Paul Mitchell before he left. So there is a working relationship already there with the club. But also he's worked with Lang, or Lang, however you want to say, um, at Aston Villa in yeah. that structure as well. So for me, it feels like they're just trying to fit the pieces to the puzzle at the moment. Obviously, they've seen that, you know, this this piece, this particular piece fits together well in that he could work well with, with Lange. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, it, it's a bit of a surprise, but it doesn't surprise me at the same time as well. Um, I, I just feel like all these moves are really, it seems to be really directed rather than knee-jerk reactions to anything, if I'm being honest. So, because you're looking at the, the people that we already have behind the scenes and the people coming in, the correlation is that they've worked together before. They've they've worked under some sort of structure, so they haven't just come in and it's it's a mishmash of of people that's going to just work together. These people have worked together before, and right. and hopefully that will bode well for for us in terms of scouting and and recruiting players. But I'm really keen to see what happens in in January. Um, you know how we are going to identify players through this data driven um, style. Um, and how that fits in with the people that have come in. Um, January will tell us a lot. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, I mean, Perchie, um, when we look at this, um, I think they're going to be judged very quickly because we, we live in that day and age, right? Every, everything's judged on, like, the first signing. The, whoever the first signing is will be like, oh, what's the point of having this, this band of people together? But... Poster Coglu's never worked with Dykes of Football. From, from my knowledge, from what I read up about him, he, he's kind of been a lone wolf and he identifies the players he wants. Do you think that's going to have any bearing in terms of, you've got Paratici saying, like Stel said, Paratici saying, hang on, I've got to get this guy. And then Lan is going, no, 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 we want this guy. Do you, do you think there are too many people involved here or do, does it not matter? But it goes in both ways. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb. I think Paratici won't be here for much longer. I think he's here to facilitate the the building of this new team. And I think then he goes, and then he's not part of this anymore. I think that I, I could be completely wrong. I've got no knowledge of it. I just have a feeling that Paratici is going to be here to facilitate it because I've, I believe also it's not just Mackenzie now joining. It's now come out that Leith is also joining from Aston Villa as well. So it right, looks okay. like we're, it looks like from the face of it all, and again, this is completely just on the face of it. It looks like Lange said, Do you know what? I want this guy, this guy, and this guy to be part of my team. And we're going to pick those over and that I want them in. So, in that context, I haven't got, a, I'm not massively against it. We will we'll find out, we will find out down the line if it's, if it's a work, but if it works out, right? We, we, we won't find out for another year, maybe even two, till we know it works out. The one thing I will say, the only positive I'm going to say on this part at the moment for me, and the only bit that's given me a glimmer of hope, is it from what it looks like, it's not it's the footballing people making the footballing decisions. Right. Where I've had a massive issue at Tottenham is people like Daniel Levy making decisions on footballing decisions when he should be nowhere near it. Listen, I don't know. I'm not in the room. I don't know who's making it, but it just comes across that if we're bringing in a couple of lads from Aston Villa. Aston Villa's scouting department, that tells me Lange has got a massive involvement in that, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but it just comes across like it. Yeah, I mean, listen, anyone can, can jump in on this. I mean, it is one of those things that it's kind of like suck it and see at the moment, right? And for me, I think this will be the best game of hindsight ever. And what I mean mm. by that is if the next two or three signings are brilliant, it will be, oh my God, this was amazing. Why didn't we do this before? And if they're rubbish, it will be, oh my God, who put this together and who's in charge? And it's a complete shambolic mess. Um, I want to touch on, on that point still. Um, Paratici? Yeah, go for it, man. I, I was going to say, I, I, I see no one's really answered like, my point. Not that I was the one making the point. Savile was asking no, the question. It. But it's the same thing that happened on Twitter. People, you guys didn't lose your mind on, on social media. They lost their mind. Adogi, Vicario, Romero, mm -hmm. Madison, Bissouma, uh, Johnson, Van de Ven. These signings are working, right? We, we're on to something here. Why would we stop that with those people behind the scenes doing it? We got rid of Gab Gabardini. Paratici's purchase said might be on his way out. In comes Lange. In comes Scott Munn. In comes Leach. In come so hold on a minute. 
Right. It, I feel mm-hmm. like what, don't don't fix what's not broken. I feel like we're fixing something that's not broken, and I'm worried about that. Obviously, hindsight will tell us what's what when when we start buying players after this new team. But wait, so wait, are you saying are you saying Paratici did a good job? Is what you're saying? So. I think Paratici has done a good job. Yes. Yeah. So I don't agree with you. I think there's just as many misses in those good names that you mentioned: Galini, Royal, Emerson. Um, yeah, in, in the beginning, but Ryan recently. Hill. The last well, two years. Been, in the beginnings, you know, Scott Munn has been a process of what happened this summer, right? They announced the, what's his name, Lange or whatever a while back. Postacoglu was the one who called and got James Madison in the door and Vicario in the door. These are all players that he had been associated with wanting back in, 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 in Scotland. So, Ange is still here. So, we're not breaking up that aspect. I don't think Paratici's had as much of his fingers in the pie as people are, are claiming he's had. He has. He has hundred yeah. percent. He has he, on he that point. On, on that point, he, he, he's the reason the whole academy's been restructured as well. He got in. The whole academy's been restructured, yes, but it doesn't mean that he was responsible for signing Vicario. I think. I, th- I, th- well, we, I, th- I think. I think he's we'll behind Vicario. I think Will makes a really good point. I just want to add on it. I think when we talk about the scouting stuff. I think people think, oh, all of a sudden, like we're gonna have a group of people here in a room are gonna be buying players. I think Posta Coglu will be part of that team. Posta Coglu will be the the sole denominator to go yes and no, right? And, and I expect that to be the case. If it's not for me, that's worrying. If the manager of the football club isn't involved in signing players, I always find it very worrying when I hear about a, a committee of people signing players for a manager. The manager should be involved with it so and i think i think we have to remember that i think when we talk about oh, about and and i think will's right i think and and poster Coglu wanted the likes of van der ven at celtic there's reports and reports everywhere on that so we have to we have to think that the manager must be involved in some capacities right as well so, I, I, my take on it sorry Sava, before no, you no, go no. i was just gonna say my take on it is that you know it, it could be a good thing because I think Ange needs to concentrate on what he's doing at the moment. He's doing well. He, he wants to work on the players that he has at the moment. Mm-hmm. I don't see any problem with, you know, people coming in and and sort of being a bigger part of the project at the moment, you know, casting that net further afield, you know, to, to try and pull in more players, to, to try and give Ange what he needs, you know. Mm. And that's the way I see it, you know, that the more people he has around him, the less he has to do around that side of things and the more he can concentrate with the group of players that he has under his control at the moment. So, yeah, um, that's the way I see it. I've got, listen, I want to go back to that little debate that was developing between Stella and Will. I I was having this the other day. Now, I watched a show you were on, Will, um, three, four weeks. It doesn't matter when it was. It was a few weeks back with... Um, Jay yes, that guy. That that guy. The guy that told me Lloyd Kelly was a, a, a top center off. Um, look, and what I found really interesting about that debate was, was you know, was the has Paratici done well or has he not? Now, what makes me laugh is Paratici had been at the club for two years, and in that two year sample size, everyone was saying, "Oh my god, the signings have been bad. Nothing's worked out." Um, he hasn't. Um, this guy included, one, by the way. Right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm getting there. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, Dante wasn't backed. All this kind of stuff. Now, aren't the people now saying? I'm gonna, I'm gonna chuck my man Stell in there with this as well. Aren't the people saying that Paratici's done a good job? Aren't we basing that will off of ten games in a good start? We've based it off ten games rather than basing it off two and a half years in which it is that he's actually been here. And this feels very much to me where our fan base is right now, that we're judging everything based off of 10 games of football rather than a bigger picture. Because last year, no one was praising Basuma. No one was praising the signing of Pedro Porro last year. No one was praising... Well, kind of but, but you, you know what I mean, right? There, yeah. So, Will, are, are, we, are we in danger of recency bias as opposed to actually waiting to see if he did a good job. Everyone yeah, think- well, I think it's only 50-50. For, first of all, I think it's only 50-50, right? The guys that are starting now are doing well, but besides them, where are the rest of them at? I, right? I agree. Like, I agree with We've you. signed at least 20 players in the last two years that Paratici's been involved. So if there's only seven that are doing, seven or eight that are doing good in the first flight, where are the rest of them at? Yeah, but hold on, right? 
in the first two years, we could easily agree that a lot of the signings were nonsense, like Galini, Chicken Royale, Clement Longley, all this nonsense, right? We can all agree on that. No, I don't think any of us here are going to say, yeah, they were really good signings. But at the same time, we were chopping and changing manager, right? We've gone for how many managers have we been through under this guy? Is it three or four? Paratici, right? So different manager, different system, different group of players inherited. Right now we need a different bunch. We, we never kind of stuck anything out. So I'll give him a bit of lee, leeway on that. But he brought in Nuno. He brought in, he some brought in those players. managers. Yeah, right. But to, 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 to recently, if I'm going the last 18 months, I think Paratici has done a good job. The way we structured the academy, the way that's now linked to the first team, the way the manager links to the academy, the players that have come in. Don't forget last year. Yeah, Basuma wasn't good and other players might not have been good. But everyone blamed Conte for that. Everyone said Conte's not getting the best out of the players. It's not the signing that's the problem. It's the manager. Yeah, but still. Now, I, I now really... we're saying, hold on, it's not the manager's fault anymore. That was all Paratici. How does that make sense? I can really care less if the 18-year-olds are on top of the Premier League too. Like that, I can care less until they start bringing in players into the first team. And that hasn't happened yet. So that's a wait and see. Uh, Will's got a point, and that I was just about to make that exact point. I was going to say we can talk about the re we can restructure everything. And by the way, I think that's a good thing because that's one of the things I wanted. But we can't call it a success until some of these lads, like the Alfie Dorringtons, the Jamie Donnellys, are now playing in the first team, right? Because we've They're seen not even making the bench. They're not, not even making the bench. Well, we had to have Ben Davis. We had to have guys we had aren't this, making the bench, but everyone's praising the youth team. Everyone told me Dane Scarlett was going to be the next best striker and he can barely get a game at Ipswich right now. Because so that's, not it's... To, that's not down to Paratici, though. Paratici is to... No, to no, no, but when we talk about restructuring, up. don't yeah. we see the fruits of our labour in three or four years' time, right? We can't we can't say it's great until something happens from it, right? I, I, I can tell you what they're yeah, doing. If, if I restructure my investment portfolio and then three years from there I'm, I'm bankrupt, that doesn't mean the, the restructuring wasn't good, right? Like, Still, are you saying... No, no, what no, I mean. Still, sorry, are you really saying... Quickly. So, sorry, that's what I mean. Like, I'm one of those people, I want to see what happens overall. So lots of people saying, oh, look at the players that we bought in, they're now coming good. Surely then mm -hmm. we could say, well, isn't that Postacoglu and not Conte. So I, listen, there's many ways we can spin this up. I'm not blaming Conte. What I'm saying is, are they good players that Paratici bought, but they were for the wrong manager? Are they okay players, but Para, but but Postacoglu is getting the best out of them? Are we basing it on 10 games rather than saying, let's wait and see where we are in two years? To Like everyone, Papa Saar, what a success. Guys had 10 games. Like, are we, do, do you see what I mean? Like, I'm not knocking can I, can it. I, can, I, can I still say, right, even with those signings that we're knocking, we still came fourth and Conte got sacked when we were in fourth. So those players must have had something about them, even if they weren't what we wanted. But they, they weren't still involved. Were but those players weren't. In, if you look at the team that finished fourth still, yeah. how many of the signings were actually... Benton Cole, Kulusevski. Um Right, so Ben and Cole played three months of that season, yeah. right? That was, that's, that's when the season turned, though. They, didn't and the Romero. season turn after we signed them? And, and Romero. Romero. How good has Romero turned out? Yeah, but how bad was Romero last year? Like Again, how, again, but everyone blamed Conte. Everyone blamed I, Conte. I didn't blame Conte for Romero being bad. I blamed Romero for Romero being bad. Some right, things so, you can't blame the manager for. But look, that's yeah. fine. Seva, if you're going to blame Romero, then that's not Paratici, then, is it? That's the point I'm making. Mate, I, I, but this is why but we're doing it like we're doing this thing again, like where loads of people constantly coming for me now talking about Romero. And I'm saying, OK, but he didn't play well last year. He's played well for 10 games this year. Can we not wait until the guy has a full year of playing well before we start putting him on this pedestal? I don't want to make this about Romero, but you know what I mean? Oh, I'll put it, I'll put it I'm just way, shocked right? the guy that put up a community post about how horrible Paratici was and was getting slagged off by Johnny X on Twitter is now. I'm the side of that. Well, no, 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 hold on. No, 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 no. What I said to Johnny X was there were players he was praising. I said, no, that's a rubbish signing. And he goes, no, he's not rubbish. We got into an argument about that. And I said, yeah. And then I said, Paratici made those signings. But when I did, I, I posted on the internet. I think it was 20 players. And I put, a, I put a column, success, failure, undecided. I think uh, a third of the players were a success. 
A third of the players were a failure. These are signings under Paratici. And another third was undecided. Of the ones in the undecided, under Postacoglu, they're actually doing well. So for me, when I look at it overall now, 66% of our signings have done well. So on that basis, I'm saying now, done well. I think Paratici's well, done I, a I good job. Move on. But when we're saying have done well, are we talking about over 10 games? That, that's my problem with it. Yeah, like, it is over like, 10 games. Yes, it is. And partly like, last season a little bit. But yeah, you know 10 what? games it is. It this is, is the beauty. Yeah. We'll be back next week. I'm sure there'll be something along these lines. Yeah. Um, but I want to move on. I want to start with Haz for, for the next topic. And by the way, people, put put your thoughts in the chat. Keep it clean. Keep it nice. Um, everyone's playing nicely so far, which is always nice to see. Um, the next thing I want to discuss, guys, something with you, Haz, is um, I, I think it's pretty much common knowledge. Every Spurs fan I'm speaking to is pretty much in agreement, hopefully everyone here is, that we need another forward. We, we need some more goals added somewhere. Um, uh, they came out today, I think it was Charlie Eccleshare, that said that one of Spurs' first priorities for the next window is going to be either a centre-forward or a left-sided forward. Um, so this isn't me saying it. It's Charlie Eccleshare was saying this. Um, what's more important, Has Is it going to be a left-sided player, i.e. a left-winger? Is it going to be a striker? If it's a striker, what does that mean then for Sun's position in the team? What do you make about this needing a forward? And where do they fit in? Well, well, look, I think Sonny's come in. He's done He's done pretty well to get the amount of goals that he's got so far. Um, we all said that he should have started down the middle from the beginning of the season. Uh, Richarlison just isn't that guy. And we've seen in the last few games that Richarlison's come in to play on the left. Um, you know, he's limited whether he plays on the left and or through the centre, to be honest with you. That's my view on it. But I think if we're going to go for someone, for me, it's got to be in that striker position. Uh, sorry, the left wing position, someone that can play sort of left forward. Um, I just think with Perisic being out, uh, with Solomon being out as well, we've already got two left wingers out. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say Brennan Johnson on the left. Brennan Johnson can play on the left. Predominantly, he was a right winger at Nottingham Forest. Um, but I think he will try and utilise him on that left-hand side. But for me, a left forward would be the one to go for. Um, in the in the striking options uh, moving forward in January, but you know for now, if we get an injury to Son, what do we do? We we'll revert back to Richarlison. There's no one else that can play up top. Richarlison playing through the middle just doesn't work for me. He does not get any goals. So I, I just think it has to be someone that can play both positions. Maybe you know hit two birds with one stone. But having said that, I really think we need to prioritise that centre back position because. One injury to any of the two that we have at the back, Van Neven uh, and Romero, we've got the likes of Dyer coming in. We've got the likes of possibly Davies coming has, in. Has, has, has. That's the next topic. Don't worry. That's the next topic. I yeah, we'll get to that. Well, we'll get to that. But um, yeah, I just I think, look, talking about, <laughs> talking about up top, I just think it needs to be a left forward of some kind. And it's, do you know what? It's a real shame because... Uh, initially when Richarlison come in and he's coming at a massive price tag, I thought he was that player that could come in a left forward, someone who can cut in, you know, get goals for us. It, it just hasn't worked out. I would rather see Richarlison on the left if we're not going for a left winger rather than through the middle because uh, it just doesn't work. It does not work. He's very limited as a footballer. Um, if you said to me in January, um, you know, Saudi side's going to come in and make a bid for him. Uh, you know, I'll take the money straight away and reinvest. You know, there, there's a lot of potential players that we can bring in in place of Richarlison. But for me, it just doesn't work. Yeah, let, let me, Perchie, I'll, I'll come to you on this front. Um, look, the, 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 the forward position, it's, it's we, we've got loads up there. I feel like we've got loads of players there. If you actually look at, obviously, Perisic is injured, but you've got Solomon, Richarlison... Brennan Johnson, Kuliseski, Hill. I'm not mentioning Son. We don't need to mention him. He's the, he's the one. Um, we need another one. Do we still, after buying all of these wingers and forwards, we need another one? Do we? Yeah. Solomon's done his ACL, right? So he's going to be out till February, March. Well, well I, um, I, th I think, I think, I think we have to. I, I see a lot of 
I'm not saying you will, but there's a lot of short termisms at the moment where our world suns out to the Af- uh, Asia Cup. I think we need it anyway. I think I think regardless if players are going to like the Afcon and stuff like that, I hear people go, "Well, we need this because they're doing this." No, no. I think we need to look at it the bigger picture. I think we're still we've got games at the moment where we're playing Richarlison, and the fact is, is if we're playing Richarlison, tells me that we have got a massive problem. Injuries are going to happen, right? The likes of Solomon getting an injury, uh, Perisic going out at the end of the season doesn't help. I think it's all about long term. I think I'm torn behind it. Do you go and buy out an out and out striker using the term Santiago Jimenez? We like it. We love this on this channel, him. Um, and or do you go out and get somebody that can do a bit of both? Do you go and get in one that can play down the middle but can also play off the left? Bit of do you go and get versatility over a position specialist, so to speak? I think that's the bit I'm torn at the moment because you would like someone that can play down the middle that can also play down the left. That could, but I think for me, you've got to find goals. I think at the moment, our wider players aren't getting enough goals. I always say it without Hyung Min Son at the moment, we're not scoring many goals. Yeah, I mean, still, I mean, the, the, the interesting thing about this is when, when you look at, let's look at the two best clubs in the in the country. I know we're, we're in a slight disagreement on whether that who that was the other night, but if we look at historically the last five, six years with Liverpool and City, what they've got is they've got loads of different forwards that can all do different things. Do you know what I mean? Like if you look at Man City, they've got the two goal scorers in Alvarez and Haaland, then you've got the pace. And, and, and the speed of Doku. Then you've got the trickery and the movement and the driving forward of, of Grealish and Foden. And Bernardo Silva just does whatever he wants to do. Liverpool have got the, the power of, of, of Darwin Nunes, the, the kind of unpredictability of Nunes, the, the wide play in Salah and Diaz, and then Gakpo and Yotta, who kind of don't really have a position but float about, grab goals. We don't seem to really have that at all in our forward lines. Do we need to adopt those sort of models where we start filling out with lots of different options? Or do you think we just need an out and out forward? Well, if you're thinking long term, you need options. If you're thinking just this season, <clears throat> just get an out and out player. So it depends whether you're thinking short term or long term. So it's probably a mixture of both. I don't see why we can't buy a striker and an attacking left sided player. I don't see why we must limit ourselves to one player. We've got £100 million for Harry Kane. For me, if I had to prioritise, I'd take a striker because, look, Johnson can play out wide, he's shown us. Um, mm-hmm. Worst case, and it's not a bad option, you put you move some back out left. We know he can do a job there. Obviously, maybe he's not as good as it in that role as what he's been in the past. He's better more as a, as a striker. But we need, we, need, we need a second striker because <clears throat> if, let's say, Johnson does get injured, Richie can come in. Okay, we know it's not great, but he can come in. Son can go out there. Brian Hill, he's back. Maybe he can play there. But if Son gets injured, we have no we have no second choice striker. That's we don't the have worry, anything. isn't it? Veliz, Veliz is a kid. Richarlison mm. is god awful. We we need we need a proper number nine at this club. We don't but, have one. So still, I well, I don't even think it's about a number nine. I think we d- we need goals, right? Listen, because there's some like you could use. That's, Arsenal, that's what a number nine does, though, doesn't it, Perchy? No, but not know. all of them. Like some number nines, like look at Jesus doesn't score a mountain of goals. That's why I said it. a proper number nine. A yeah, okay, yeah, nine okay. Get, but, gets you goals. Yeah, we so, problem is, is you're right with Sun. I mean, it feels like what if we, it was me, Perchy, Perchy, hmm? Perchy. If it was me, right? I would I would get a mixture of proven. And um, maybe a bit of a gamble. I agree. So in terms of a striker, um, there was that guy that you, I forgot his name, you looked, mentioned him the other day and I went and looked to him. Is it Jimenez? Yes, yeah, Santiago Jimenez. Yeah, right. fine. Put, put a bid in for him. Put a bid yeah. in for him. Ivan Tony. I know he's a bit older. Maybe, maybe we might not make that happen in the price. 100 million. 100 million. Okay, so so forget, million. forget Ivan Tony then. Get Jimenez. And if, if it was me, I would put in a bid for Jaden Sancho. And the reason I would is because he's a good player, but he is a victim of the environment at Man United. A lot of our players, Basuma, was a victim of the environment at Spurs. Take Jaden Sancho out of the cesspit that's Man United, bring him to a positive environment with a positive manager and a team that's fresh and actually looking forward. Uh, Isn't that, wouldn't you say it's a bit of a high risk gamble, though? Because it is a gamble. Yeah, but it would be, but normally it's been there too long. 
But right. is it? Yeah, I, I think what you put, but it's like when I talk about gambling, like, that's a high risk gamble, right? Like yeah. when you talk, sometimes when you talk about gambling, you go, like, oh, I'll put a 20 million pid in for this 21 year old that everyone's raving about, but he could come good. But if you drop him in, but if you're with a Sancho, Sancho could cost you crazy money, wages are through the roof, and then you find out that he's got an attitude problem, and then you've got, okay, we're back well, to you, having you, 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 our yeah, next Gombele, you, you, right? I hear you. Well, uh, oh, hold on. Jadon Sancho is absolutely fine at Borussia Dortmund. No, no, no. That was I a good environment. I'm not, I'm not putting that was, the two that was four years ago. So. He, he, he's not an issue for England. There's no complaints from England with Jadon Sancho when he plays he for them. He doesn't play for England. His first season at Man United, he was decent, right? It's only now that it's... There's not one it's player not at Man now. United. It's ever. It's been for the last Will, two whole seasons. Will it's there not is not just one player? Now. There's not one player at Man United right now that you'd say brilliant. Even Bruno Fernandes looks absolutely woeful, attitude and performance, and he's the captain. He he was a cracking player when he first went there. We wanted him. I, I, I'm telling you, Bruno Fernandes still does what Bruno Fernandes did. That's the point. And in fact, most United fans are actually asking for Bruno Fernandes to be taken out of the side because he's not. He, he's too like selfish and focused on doing his own that's thing. That's my point. Well, but this is my but point. But that's what Bruno Fernandez always has done. He was creating and scoring a couple of years ago. I, he's I still think still creating and scoring. He's the only one creating and scoring. Not not not, not like before. Not like before. I, listen, I, 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 I think I, anyone at Man United now is 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 um is choking. Anthony was one of the hottest properties as a wide player in European football. He's gone there. And he looks like Anthony. You have an argument because he's only been Anthony. You have an argument because he was only there for nine months, right? But Jaden Sancho has been there for years, mm. and with rot, with rot, sometimes you, it's too late to save things, right? You, you know, but, yeah, but when, when you, at some point, when, you, you know, root canal doesn't work anymore. You got to pull the tooth because because the dentist hasn't treated the decay. If right. you stay in a That's rubbish environment like Magniac, then you go to rubbish environment like no, it start with Ollie. Right, Sancho went there under Oli, rubbish, Ragniak, turmoil, Ten Hag, meltdown. He hasn't had one positive period at Man United. Spurs is a good, healthy environment right now. Right, but what I'm saying is that Sancho's been in that in that you know cavity filled mouth for too long, right? Anthony, you can go do a root canal, right? Fix him up, patch him up, get him in a better environment, you know, clear out the bacteria, you're good to go, right? Sanchez has been there too long. That tooth's got to be pulled, man. I think, I think the important thing Harry, is... Harry Kane's been in a rubbish environment at Spurs for ages. He's gone to Bayern Munich. He's, yeah, right. but, 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 he's what, a world-class yeah, player. He's not... What, you know, what's the difference with Harry Kane and Jadon Sancho? Harry Kane, doesn't matter how bad it is at Tottenham, turns up, does his job right. I think... I think listen, by the way... Was, uh, what, he what wasn't in a bad environment under Pochettino either, right? Sancho's yeah, been <laughs> banned. <laughs> he's been banned. Yeah, but... This, but, but it, whether or not we, I agree or disagree with the situation, right? Because I listen. I think I think there's no there's no smoke without fire, right? And I think for a player to be excluded from anything, there's got to have been something that's happened. Like, and the fact is, is I think the players have completely given up with Ten Hag. I'll say that, but the players all were against Sancho. Were they? So that tells me the play, his own teammates weren't sitting there in solidarity going, no, 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 we need to get this kid back in. They're happy for him to not be in it. Does that not, that would raise alarm bells if I'm a scout going, there's got to be a reason here. Like, is it worth taking such a big risk? It's one of those, like, what I'm saying, so it's one of those gambles that you put on that you could, you could, you could, it could be an absolute money breaker. He comes into Tottenham, fresh environment and hits the ground running immediately. But, the, the failure of that and he comes in and it becomes a problem and he's on a five-year contract at 300 grand a week and then you go in you're going we're not, in three we're not going to pay him that though. we won't pay him that we won't the problem I've got the turn problem I've got side real quick look over to the left real quick I want to see if there's last word on Spurs written on the side of your ball cap that I can't <laughs> <see>. <laughs> listen oh. I know Shot I know I'm talking, I know I'm talking sense <laughs> Right about the environment because I said the same thing last year when I was telling everyone Romero is a good player. The, the 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 environment is wrong. There are players at Spurs that are good. The environment is wrong, and now we're seeing it this year. The environment. We're talking about the young players, and I'm saying again, Sancho's 23, and from the age of 20 to 23, the young part of his 20s, he's been in a cesspit environment. Pull him out and see. 
it is a risk perch. You know, I agree with you. It is a risk because we don't know. You're right. There might be some baggage there that isn't shake. You can't is shake he, it off. Is he a I think, I think he's a good player. There's a good player there. Okay, but is he, Is he? guys, I, I'll chuck this out there with Sancho. I, I've always you Take those last one on Spurs comments back, Will. <laughs> well, anyone who's ever streamed with me will know that I've, I, I call some players sometimes players, right? The players that do really well get loads and loads of hype, but they are good sometimes, right? That's where I put Sancho. I put Sancho in that bucket. He's talented beyond belief, but I don't know. Is he that volume goal scorer, scorer we need? Because for me, Will, I'll come to you on this. For me, it doesn't need to be a 30, 35 goal a season, man. But I think it does need to be someone that offers you 15 to 18, whether they're a wide man or a forward. I think we need that comfort of knowing, right, Sonny's going to get you 18 to 23 over here. We need another bloke that can get 15 to 18 over here. And I don't I don't think we've got that at all anywhere. Yeah, no, for me, I mean, you got. I think Sun's going to get you probably 20 plus playing in this particular system, low balls across the face of the box. You know, he's going to find that. I think what we need is somebody who will get 16 GA in the league on both sides of the pitch. We need someone who's getting eight goals, eight assists on the right. Someone who's getting eight goals, eight assists on the left. James Madison comes in with his 10, 10, tens, right? And, and we're, and we're flying right now. We don't have anybody getting eight or eight on either side of the pitch. Right. So that's the problem for me. I agree. And I would say, you know, Sun's got, you know, what, maybe four or five years left, Max, you know, playing at this level. Um, you know, you could bring in somebody to play in behind him. But I, I think a utility player, somebody who can play down the middle and play on the left, somebody like a Jonathan David or something like that, who's got experience. Yeah, he's not a world class player or anything like that, but he's going to work hard. He'll get you a goal. He can play on the left. He can play up the middle. He can play on the right. I mean, because for Canada, he plays all across, you know, Canada's team so bad that they, you know, they've got, you know, Alfonso Davies playing left winger and, you know, all kinds of different things. So, and then Alfonso Davies always misses the, the their, their camps. So someone who can do a job pretty much wherever we need it, but do a good job. And I don't mean do a job into where like Brian Kill. Brian Hill comes on the pitch and gets fouled once or twice. I'm talking about somebody who actually impacts the game and can score goals, can play on the left for four or five weeks if Solomon's injured or out for a couple months. Someone who can play on the right, you know, if Kulazewski is just bad on form. You know, we got Brendan Johnson. He's yet to see what he can do. But, um, you know, right now there's a big gaping hole. Per uh, Perisic isn't coming back, right? He'll be gone in the summer. Solomon, we still don't even know if he's a player yet. So, yeah, well, look, moving moving from the centre forward position to the centre back position. And by the way, keep getting your comments in. Sorry, that one went mad. I think everyone's got their idea of who the forward should be, what it should look like. Um, but we, we will see what time I've, I've, I've put my balls on the line a number of times and said, I think it should be Santiago Jimenez. I think that guy is. Wherever he goes next, I think that guy's going to start scoring goals for fun. And I expect to see him at Barca or Madrid one day. Um, the next topic I want to talk about is, I'm going to start with Haas because he, he he moved on to this without even being prompted to. Um, I put Dyer, Phillips or Davis. Who replaces Romero or VDV? Now, before people go mad at me in the chat, I don't mean just replaces them. I don't mean like, who should we drop for Chelsea? I mean, you all know what I mean, right? If one of them picks up an injury, where do we go with this? Because we started the season by seeing Ashley Phillips on the bench. Um, then Dyer seemed to come back into the fold. And then there were talks about, well, Phillips had a knock. But then when Phillips got over that knock, what a, what, a, what, a, what a picture that is. What's that? Oh, sorry. You all froze. I thought, I thought it was it's probably me. <laughs> well, I've got a, I was like, what's he, what's he saying that we're not? Um, <laughs> I, my question is, Pass. If one of those two get, picks up an injury and we have to replace for a long term, are you going with Ashley Phillips as a young, agile, eighteen-year-old, bit of a monster at the back who, who's going to get better, or are you going with the tried and tested but maybe not always so great Dyer or Davis? What are you doing? For me, uh, we've tried and tested for far too long with Dyer and Davis. I think it's about time we we come in with the new, um, which is Phillips. I don't want to see Dyer 
having to play another game unless it's absolutely necessary. Like the wheels have fallen off. We've got no one left, no Phillips, no Van der Ven, Romero. That's the only time I want to see him come in. We've seen too much, uh, too many times from Dyer, too many mistakes um, over the past few seasons. It's just not worked out for him. You know, since Poch left, not worked out. He's regressed as a defender. Um, and I think Phillips, we've, we've got to look at him as, you know, a new beginning. You know, Ange wants to develop young players. He wants to utilise the younger generation to come in, be a part of the team. And I think Phillips fits that profile. You know, he's um, under-19 international, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, for England. Um, the reason he wasn't on the be bench, I believe, last couple of games is because he was playing um, in the under-18s team or under-19s team, I believe, um, for Tottenham Hotspur. So, look, um, I think we need to give him a chance at some point. This season could be a good opportunity for him. You know, I know we're top of the league, but, you know, it's the, for me, this season was always going to be a free pass for Ange. You know, no matter what happens, if we finish fifth, sixth, seventh, second, third, fourth, whatever it is, you know, give the players a chance this season, integrate them into the team, get him to play, you know, first team football if one of the two gets injured and um, see what he can do. Because for me, I think I'd rather see Phillips come in and make mistakes and learn in the process rather than Dyer coming back in in the firing line and making the same old mistakes again and again and again. So for me, it's Phillips um, over Dyer and Davies all day of the week. Yeah, Will, um, Phillips, the, the argument will be how much have we really seen him, right? How many How many of us can claim we watched Blackburn for the... I think he played seven times in the first team last year. I'll be honest, I didn't watch him play. Um, apparently they're really impressed with him. Would you rather a young player goes in, potentially making mistakes, but you can take that because he's young and will learn, or we go for Dyer or Davis again, who aren't the same ilk, i.e. Phillips is quick and can play in that back line? Which way do you go with this? Well, I mean, Phillips playing seven games for the first line at Blackburn is better than the ball boy with a cold and I'd rather see the ball boy with a cold play than Eric Dyer. So wow. yeah, Ashley Phillips for me. <laughs> Ashley Phillips, are you, are you, are you uh, look, he, he'll be going in alongside whoever it is a very good center half in Romero or Van der Ven, right? Will you, you'd rather that was nurtured, right? You'd rather we nurture that. And even if I'll, I'll add on to that question and I'll go the same to everyone as well. Even if, Romero and Van der Ven don't pick up an injury, touch wood, they don't. Do you think there is going to be times where maybe where we are free no up and you can introduce Ashley Phillips to give him 15, 20 minutes of a game so he can start getting used to some Premier League football and the pace of the Premier League? Yeah, I'm sure, are you, I'm sure you'll get opportunities. You know, I mean, for me, I, I mean, so for me, the pecking order is Phillips. And if he's maybe not as solid on the left, you know, maybe the Davies comes in there. But Eric Dyer, I don't want to. I don't even want to see him on the bench. I hope he leaves in January. I hope he goes back to Portugal. Um, you know, him just even walking around, telling the camera crew before training, uh, "You don't have to take. You don't have to take pictures of me. You won't use them anyway." And nobody cares. You cry, baby. Uh, go away. Fair enough. Right, Estelle. Um, Eric Dyer clearly not like that. What about what about Ben Davis, Estelle? Because most managers come in. And Ben Davis seems to be a kind of steady Eddie for them. Um, but the way we play now, surely a, a, a Davis in the back two would just be a nightmare for the line that we've the high line that we play, wouldn't it? There, there was nothing steady Eddie about Ben Davis uh, against Crystal <laughs> Palace. Nothing at all. That's why he got pulled after 45 minutes. He came on because the left back is injured. And he got pulled off as the only left back in the club that's fit. That tells you how bad he is. Eric Dyer and Ben Davies need to be gone from this club, along with others like Sessignon because he's injury prone, the Rodons and all the others. They all need to go. It's a new regime. It's a new direction. It's a new style of football. Only have players that play this football. Otherwise, when they come on, you're going to see what happened in the first half of Crystal Palace again and again and again. It was shocking. 
but both outs have I'd, I'd, I'd play anyone academy kid new signing anyone ahead of them even if they come on and they make a mistake and cost us a game i don't care because i'm sorry they they, they can't play this football two touch football progressive football possession based football on the front foot attacking foot that's not them they're not those players they never have been they never will be that's why when the last time we played this football was pochettino tell me what happened to ben davies and dyer benched yeah so, yeah, I mean, I, it just worried me that there was, you know, Dyer seemed to have gone out of favour and then he was back in and it was like, oh my God, why are we, what, why is he back in? But listen, it is what it is. I mean, Perchie, I'm going to come to you before I do. Um, Sorry, I've got to read out a couple of Super Chats before I do, otherwise I'll never get to them. Um, And also, please, I've just put the link in the chat. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, That would be much appreciated. <laughs> Subscribe to Tottenham Away and the link, I'll get uh, one of the moderators to put that in the chat. Subscribe to pass as well at South Yukois and subscribe to Football Heritage TV and our link is pinned in the chat. So our link is pinned in the chat. If everyone would be so kind, uh, that is much appreciated. Um, Super chat so far, we've had um, Martin Knightsbridge. Uh, big up to you, Martin. I said, point proven. You five can't agree. If this is the dress rehearsal for January window, we're in trouble. Um, yeah, I mean, take that how you want it. I mean, I think we're only going to tell in January how well this all works, right? Yeah. Um, and then is January the window to really judge how well new scouting department has gelled in the space of a couple of months? But uh, listen, I don't disagree with you. Thank you so much for that, Martin. And then um, um, Amasim86 has said, Neto, Huang and Eze, any of these would be perfect. Um, just quickly, guys, without really breaking away from the current point, um, Huang is a player that a lot of people are talking about. Um, he's not really done anything before this season, and now this season seems to be scoring at quite a frequency and being a bit of a nuisance. Just a quick yes or no from people Huang from Wolves, and yeah, like yeah. Huang, in, in, Huang. As, as yeah, as a substitute or, or, or depth on the wings or striker position because he can play both left or centrally. Um, I mean, sure, why not? I mean, as long as it doesn't cost us a bunch of money and he's just as a depth position, I don't see him as a, as a, as a, as a main starter starter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Korean fans probably won't like that, but, you know, it, just, it is I'd, what it is. I'd take, e, I'd take Eze out of those three. Oh, I'd I'd love Eze him, as well. I'd take them both. I'd pick Eze. Like, yeah. I'd love all three of those. Um, listen, first of all, thank you very much. Please do keep subscribing. Thank you. Uh, Perchy, coming over to you. Um I think the fact that we're having the conversation where it's either an 18-year-old who's played seven first-team games for Blackburn or Davis or Dyer shows that we didn't really do what we needed to in the transfer window. For you, I'm going to twist the question. Um, I know your opinion on this as well. So for you, I'm going to twist the question. Does that make the first signing in January, does that need to be a centre-back? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've had the, me and you have this chat all the time. I say it should be on the day one. If Tottenham would do things right, you get it done in December. When I hear I, when I hear all the notion, oh, the window's not open. Deals get done. Deals can get done in December. They just can't join your club until the first. If we're doing things, we should have a centre half on day one walking into the club, and that's so crucial because, listen, however much I think Ashley Phillips in the future is going to be a really really big player for us, and I really really like this kid. Um. You can't, it's harsh to rely on this lad straight away. And I, he, he, by the way, is the third choice. Whenever, if people see him off the bench, I think what a lot of it is, is he's still playing in the um, under 23s or the under 21s, wherever it is now. I can't always forget. And the under 21s. So he can't be in both, I think. Because I've seen him play in when we play the academy plays a game. Um, and then he's not on the bench. So when people don't see him on the bench, it might be because of that, that he's actually playing, which, which I'm not against, because I'd rather this lad play some football than not play some football. But I think he will be the first choice as soon as, um, if if an injury happens, of course, I think. Um, but yeah, no, if, if, we're, if we're being honest with ourselves, I think we'll probably collectively all here say, the centre of if we didn't sign any other player in January, which I think we still need loads, I think, and we only signed one, it has to be a centre of has to be. Well, okay, but let, let's have that conversation then. Uh, Hass, um, talk to me. 
Um, we're all in a kind of agreement that we've got to sort out that centre half. Down. I think most of us were probably disappointed that on the last day of the window was when we started asking questions. Like mm. it was Lloyd Kelly on the last day of the window, and it was um, um, uh, Trevor Chalaber on the last day of the window. No. Yeah. Um, disappointing we didn't get it done then. What sort of centre back are you expecting? I'm gonna I'm gonna put everyone on the spot here. What sort of names are realistic? And I'm going to tag in a third question onto this for all of you. Do we have to get away from this notion that I get whenever I ask this question to Spurs fans of whoever it is will have to be happy to sit on a bench behind Romero and Van der Ven? Do we have to get away from this notion that whoever comes in is never going to play? Yeah, I think I think look, whoever comes in, um, they're not going to budge the starting two of Romero or Van der Ven. Let's put it that way. They've, they've formed a great partnership so far. Essentially, what we do need is we need cover, but we need cover that's not, you know, we need adequate cover. Someone that's capable, can do the simple things, um, that hasn't got too many mistakes in them, that can, you know, someone dependable and solid. For me, I can see us going um, for someone like Adara Bio in, in the January window from Fulham, if I'm being honest with you, who's young, um, is he is he English? Um, I, I don't well, know. He's Nigerian, but he's homegrown. Right, so he, he counts as homegrown as well. Um, yeah. Someone that can come, he's coming for Fulham when they've needed him. You know, he's done he's done a decent job when he's coming, and that's what we need. We need someone that can come in that's sort of semi reliable. Someone that's not going to come in and make a huge amount of mistakes. Um, uh, yeah, I can't see us going out in January and buying a proven defender. I I, I just don't think. <sighs> That's well, how it's it, going to pan out. Has, has, I do agree with you to a certain extent, but I think I think we have to get away. I, I think was the some point that Sam made, I do agree with to it, was that we need to get away from this bench player. We, we've had had it all this time, but I want to so, we should be signing someone that is has got the mentality that goes, do you know what? I, if I get my opportunity, I'm gonna prove it and try and fight for my place. Wait, didn't, didn't didn't Richarlison say that before we signed him? He said, "He said I'm yeah. going to fight for my place for Harry Kane um, to to get ahead of whoever it is, Son Harry Kane. I'm coming for them." But he basically I, said, "I'm going to fight for my place." I expect most players to say that though. Like, if you're not saying it, that worries me, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, listen, whether or not I agree with what with Richarlison, because I don't think he's a very good football player, but if we if we do sign a player and they're just happy to just pander on the bench, what that worries me. I think. It comes down to mentality, right? Like, I expect a player to come in and go, do you know what? When I get my opportunity, I'm going to show that I should be in this team. And we have to have players that fight for it, right? Look at other teams, right, with centre. I think Man City's a great... I mean, Man City's a great example. They will have so many good players that go, do you know what? I have a good run of games. I get I get five or six run of games. And then, like, look at Kanji, right? Kanji, they didn't pay loads and loads of money for him. But now look at him, he plays, he plays in and out of the team and they have a squad, right? Let me let me yeah. go on. I mean, Stel, th this is the this is the key thing for me. I, I'm trying to learn. I say I'm trying to learn, I'm not <laughs> part of the Spurs setup. I, as a fan, I'm trying to learn from when Poch was here and we had that the 11, you know, the 11 that, that everyone talks about. All I heard then was, oh, well, you can't buy this player because they'll have to sit on a bench behind Deli Ali. You can't buy this player, they'll have to sit on a bench behind Dembele and Toby and Jan. Problem is, the big, big, big clubs, they don't do that. And Quint, tell me if I'm wrong, isn't that where all our fans are talking about what we should be doing, is winning titles and challenging? But yet our mindset is that, well, we can't, you know, whoever we bring in has to be a complete sub that will see Van de Ven and Romero as unbreakable. Man City have stones, Diaz, Vardial, Akanji, um, a missing one. Ake, like, how do they do it? But we only seem to want two that are going to play every game for ninety minutes. Yeah, no, you're right. We need we need a defender that can rotate with the existing players, and there's not this big drop off, so that we can right. compete in the Carabao Cup and not make nine changes, and we can compete in all all trophies and competitions. But we need to build a squad, which means you need at least minimum two good players for every position. So two good left-sided centre-backs and two good right-sided centre-backs, two yeah. good goalkeepers, two good left-backs and so on and so on. And they've all got to complement the system we play. Um, 
I disagree a bit with Perchie that the priority should be a centre back. And the reason I disagree with that, Perchie, is because our strength is our possession based attacking football. That's the way we're set mm. up. I know it starts from the back, and um, a lot of our play does often uh, begin from back to middle to front. But being the team we are now, I think we need to play to our strength. And our strength is attacking. <clears throat> Yeah, we've got the most chances created or shots and all, all these wonderful stats of an attacking ilk. I mean, Will can confirm that or tell me I'm full of shit as usual. But um, I was a bit harsh there. But if we get an attacking player, as in the striker or the left-sided attacking player, a versatile player across the front three first, we're doubling down on our strength. We, we, we're saying, right, this is what we're good at. Let's make sure we're the best at it now. Whereas yeah. the defence... We need to fix that as well because if we get an injury, we are in trouble. But I, I would, I would get the attacking player in first because, for me, that's but, but what would, our strongest attribute is. But would you, would you, would you not say, Stel, though, that out the drop off between the first team centre halves and yeah. the backup centre halves is like is night and day. I think you lose an attacker. Yes, Son is the. I kind of put Son in a different bracket kind of thing, because if you lose Hing Min Son, you are in trouble. But you lose if you lose <clears throat> if you lose Kulazeski or if you yeah. lose like do you know what I mean? We we've lost Manuel Solomon and we've already lost um Perisic to injury. You look at it and go, okay, we're okay. Yeah, I don't like the like that Richarlison's playing, but you lose Van der Ven or you lose Romero right now. You're playing All right. So, so this is you know this, I mean? this is you know I get it. This is how I would that's this is how I would look at it. If you were to lose Van der Ven and Die came in, would you rather we have that shaky defense and hope the attackers get us out of trouble, or would you rather um, if we have a shaky defense, we've bought another good forward player, so there's more chance of us getting out of that trouble because we've got more attacking power. You oh, answered oh. this earlier yourself. You answered this earlier yourself, Stel. Before I, I answer that, before I answer that, Will, you need to go, right? You need to jump out. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go pick some guys up, but uh, I'll be back at home base starting uh, Sunday night. So you guys have my full attention next week. It was fun chatting with you, cool. and Stel, you're only full of shit when you're constipated. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Appreciate no, it. cheers, Will. Thanks for being part of episode cheers, one. Will. Really appreciate it. Take care and go and subscribe to Will over at um, over at Tottenham away. So That's big right. up to you, Will. Thank you. Um, bye bye. Still, you you already alluded to it earlier in the show. Um, is everyone changed now? Oh, oh look, there we go. Brilliant. Our oh, Perchy's on it. He's on it. Um, both. What? Why should it be an either or? You know, I agree. But but you said who? I, I was I was answering who to get first. Who, 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 which player comes yeah. in first? I would rather, Perchy, I'd rather strengthen the attack. So no matter what goes wrong at the back, we've got more firepower to pull us out of it. Whereas if 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 our defenders aren't fit, uh, sorry, if our defenders are all fit and healthy, but the attack is lacking because we're just it's just not happening, we don't have that other option. I I I, 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 I this is a, this is about philosophy. I yeah, my yeah. philosophy, my philosophy is this. If I'm not very good writing with my left hand, but I'm really good with my right hand, should I try and learn to be better on my left or make sure my right is just superb? I'd rather double down on my strength. Okay, but what I would, I'd flip it that, okay? I'll, fl I'll flip your argument for a second. Like, you've, we conceding, I think we're conceding quite a lot of chances, right? I think we do. We can see quite a lot of chances in games, even to what I would put in air quotes, the lesser teams. Now, but we miss a lot of chances as well, though, Perchy. We do. But let's be let that's fair, but let's be honest. The chances that we do let off, I would be terrified with a defense of Dyer and Davis or Phillips and that, Davis. That's, that's how I feel when Richarlison's taking the shot. I, I feel the same when he's taking the I, shot. I, he's got a point. I agree, he's got a point. I agree with I agree with you, Stell, but I look at it and go. Who at least now, even now, I go. I don't think he's the greatest player in the world. I'm not advocating that we keep a hold of him for whatever reason. But a player that I would say give an opportunity to. We've got the likes of Brian Hill. Don't think he's the greatest in the world, but you give him an opportunity. Brennan Johnson. 
for me, I don't know how this man doesn't start a game of football for us at the moment when we play Richarlison. He's, he's been injured. That, he, I'm sure he, he has. I, 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 I get that. Injured. I get that, of course. But but you've got one minute me, left, guys. You've got one minute yeah, left. Get your box and punches And I'll in. end it in that bit in the sense of, for me, you lose one of those two centre-halves, even just one of them, I think we concede a lot, lot more goals than we do right now. I think it comes down to, do we concede more by having a weaker defence more conceded than what we will score more if we bring in another attacking player. That's 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 the beauty of the question that we'll never yeah. know until it actually happens, right? But yeah, I get I do get I do get where you're coming from. For me though, I it, I think it's more the terrifying. If Charleston if Charleston hits the target against Fulham in the first half and against Luton, those games are over. They're done. Instead, no, I agree. Oh, I agree. Here we go. We're clinging on. It's a, it's not it's not as easy this game now, is it? Yeah, so there you go. You've got uh, Perchie telling everyone he thinks that Brian Hill is the missing ingredient to win the title. <laughs> and Stell says we don't need any more centre half. So there we go. That that summed that up. Um, moving on, Hass. Um, and by the way, please, guys, guys and girls, there's there's nearly 365 of you in it. Someone subscribe, smash the like button. Let's. Uh, mm -hmm. We should be on over. We should be on over 200 likes. We're only on 186, and we've had zero subscribers throughout the entire show, which is. Really, really tight. We've bought you a new panel show with brilliant guests. Subscribe to them as well. Um, and the link is pinned. Um, Hass, I'm going to start with you. Um, our fourth question of the day. Only one more after this. The penultimate question is this. And I couldn't write my whole question, so I'll caveat the rest of it. Based off of our start for the season, not in the summer, not what we would have predicted in the summer, because I think everyone there would have just said, wow, if we can get back into Europe, whether it's Conference League or Europa League, wow. After the really good start we've had after 10 games, from this position where we're already five points, sorry, five points clear, I think eight points clear of Europa League places, is it a failure from this position to not get Champions League at this stage? Or is it too early for that? A bit of yes and a bit, bit of no, to be honest with you. Um, a, it's only been 10 games, but we've had a great start in terms of the amount of points we've accrued. Not not, not necessarily the way we've played, because some games we haven't played great, but we've still yep. you know, got over the line sort of thing. But the amount of points we've got now, uh, the gap that we've sort of created, so we've won the games that we had to win at the time. We didn't bottle it, which is great. You have to factor in the form of other clubs at the moment. Manchester United, they look so poor this season. They are poor this season, yep. right? They, they've they won five, they've, they've lost five. They're in turmoil. They're conceding loads of goals. I can't see them, you know, fixing it anytime soon. And probably a new manager will come in at some point. You look at the likes of Chelsea. Chelsea, again, indifferent. You know, the form is bad. They are below mid-table at the moment. You know, that's that's two clubs out of the equation so far. You factor in that top five get Champions League this season. I don't think there's there's no reason why we can't go out and get one of those spots this season, considering the way we've started. The only issue is going to be squad depth, OK? And if it comes down to that, then you can't really say it's been a failure because the squad depth isn't, you know, deep enough to to sort of cover uh, the players that we have at the moment. The blame would have to go on the board for that because they're the ones who have to help Ange out and they're the ones who have to give him the players that we need to increase increase squad depth. So in a nutshell, it, it's a bit of yes and no, and it all depends on different sort of permutations, right? Different has, variables. Isn't that still failure though? If the board don't back Ange, and it's still failure, but it's the failure's on the on the board's behalf, not the failure's Ange. on the board. Yeah, not Ange because Ange is doing what what he but can as, at the as moment. Spurs, it's still failure. As, it? as Spurs, it'll be a failure. But what Ange is yeah. doing at the moment, I didn't mention any Ange, names in no. it. I didn't say Ange. I did. I'm just. I'm just no, saying. No, I know. Right I know. Now, like, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is what what he's got, mm. what he's working with at the moment, he's doing great because he's getting everything. But the most he can out of this squad. It's not the finished article. They're not playing the best football in the league, but it's got them playing football, got them playing much better than what we've seen in the last few seasons. But he needs to be backed. Overall, it's a failure on, on part of the board if we don't get it over the line. Because if we don't get it over the line in terms of Champions League qualification, then it means that the board haven't backed him. Okay? 
for me, the aim of the board, in my opinion, is to get that Champions League qualification. I've always said this from day one, you know, the board's aim is to get into that European spot, Champions League, get the revenue, you know, it's all about the money at the end of the day. So to get there, you know, to get the revenue coming in, you have to put in a bit as well. So for me, I think it's a failure. It's a failure if the board back him and we don't get it, that has to be on Ange. But, you know, if the board don't back him, then it's on the board. Ah, sorry, ignore that. Sorry, I was sorry, ignore that. Perchy, can you fix this screen? Sorry, that was my bad, man. My bad. Um, I, I was going to say, sorry, sorry. I mean, still, I want to bring you in here. Sorry, the reason I, what I was trying to do is bring up the Premier League table there, and I've actually lied. Um, the, the, the Premier League table uh, will tell with, you... With nine points. It's nine. We're nine points off of... Uh, I say off of. We're nine points ahead of Newcastle in sixth, which means... The top five should get Champions League. Mm. So from this position, Stel, whatever happens, and I know yeah. I know it's early days. The reason I'm asking if it's failure is that's a four game swing. Yeah. It's a three game swing depending on goal difference, but it's a, it's a four game swing if you want to add the extra point in. So whatever yeah. we do now between the end of the season, we we to not get Champions League, the teams that are, have got 17 points in Brighton and, and Newcastle would have to do four games better than we do. So yeah. is it a failure from this point to not get Champions League football? A hundred percent, yes, it is. To not get Champions League after the best start since 61, where two teams that has mentioned who are, who we thought might be serious threats this year have completely fallen off. All the opposition around us have got Europe. Everyone in that top 10 has got Europe except for us. Um, we're the only team without European football. We're literally... We've got a nine-day rest before Palace to Chelsea. Yeah. These teams are playing Carabao Cup, then Premier League, then, Euro then European Cup, then Premier League. To not get Europe now and for the board not to go and backhand in January to make sure we get it, it's a massive failure. I, the, our, our, forget 10 games. After nine games, there was this um, stat that Match of the Day showed saying that... Um, the team that has had so many points after nine games, which is what we had, in the last God knows how many years, 30 years, 20% uh, went on to win the league. Um, not 80, sorry, 75% went on to win, um, to get top four. And then 5% missed out on top four altogether, but they came fifth. They still mm -hmm. came fifth. After 10 games of points we're on, you're supposed to finish top three. So, I, 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 my, my, my um, has at the start of the season, I said, look, we're going to finish sixth, seventh, eighth. Then when we sold Kane, I said, that's it, mid table. Yeah. Now, now, for me, my expectations have shifted completely. If we don't get Champions League next year, it's a massive failure. Well, massive. still, um, if you can see that, uh, in the comments, sorry, Sava. Um, HJD says, HJD says, um, <laughs> apparently, every team that has had this many points by this stage of the season has always finished in a Champions League place in history. Well, there you go. There's no one, there's no there one that ha has had this many points that has finished outside the Champions League spot. So, yeah, bang on. If we... <laughs> it'll be... I don't want to say the S word, but it would be that if we didn't, right? Let's be honest. Yes, Spursy. It Spursy. would be, though, right? It would be. Pop <laughs> Spursy. So, it's all right. I'll say it. I mean, can you imagine... Can you imagine... I mean, it'll be hell online, social media... <laughs> You know, the, I think the, the, the reason I, I thought about this question, right, and as I say, you have to sit down and think long and hard about it. But the reason I wanted to put this question out there was I think that we, we can't have it both ways. And what mm. I mean by that is there are lots of people that are told, um, you know, we talked about this the other day, you know, just enjoy the ride. Everything's brilliant. This is the best manager we've had ever. Um, Van Aven and Romero is the best partnership in the league. Doggy's the best left back in the league. Madison's the best playmaker. Son's going to win the golden boot. Oh my God, Basuma, we've never seen a better defensive midfielder. And Kulu's great. That's fine. And those people that are telling me we should be challenging for a title, I might disagree with you, but that's fine. But then what we can't have, guys, is it can't be the other way. It can't be that they're saying all of these things about how great we are and we're going to win a title or, or should be challenging for a title. But then saying, oh, well, if we now fall away from where we are, oh, don't worry, it's just his first season. Because no, you can't. 
Yeah, you're right. I'm you're the right. one saying. Yeah. I'm Can't the one saying. Way. If we finish in the Europa League places, I'm not going to be disappointed in the, the season because I still think it's far too early, and I believe that it is his first year. But do you see where I'm coming with that? I think it's almost yeah. like having a backup excuse, basically. Yes, it's, you either you either you know put your balls on the chopping board, right? Sorry for to be so crass and say you know what? Yeah, we're in a title race, which would mean if we don't get Champions League football, it's a failure, or you don't, right? And that that's that for me is why I, I don't ever go in balls deep on yeah, we're winning titles and we're challenging because if we did have a monumental drop off, touch wood, we don't, then all of a sudden it starts to become a bit. Do you, yeah. know, do you know why it's a failure? Do you know why it's a failure? Because things change in everyday walk of, of life, right? Yeah. Um, if if we're in a situation none of us thought we'd be in, right? No one in really? football would have predicted this. Not in a, I, bet, I bet the bookies didn't even offer bets on this because they would have said, mate, that's just a <laughs> stupid bet, right? Yeah, yeah. We're in a, we're in a, we're in a position that no one ever envisaged. This is an opportunity to do something with it, right? What we do with it, we have no idea. We can all have a good estimate as to what we think we will do with it. The failure will be to not seize on the opportunity you've created and do something with it. And that is a collective of the players, the manager, the coaches, the board and the football directors. If they collectively can't take this opportunity and do something with it, you failed on the opportunity that's been created. That's how I look yeah. at it. Would I look at yeah. it as a grand failure in a in, in a three, four year project? No, I'm with you, Savva. I would say, Savva, you're right. If we end up finishing sixth, it's not a failure because it's a three year project. But yeah. things change. There's an opportunity. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. What I'm saying is, Percy, we can't those back, they can't have it both ways. Yeah. Like fans, that's, yeah. fans can't have it both ways. We either go in now and go, you know what? This is different. This manager's different. Um, we've got the nine point buffer. Mm. to drop I, I know it's yeah. only 10 games but for we, what we're saying is new i'm using newcastle because they're one of the teams hang on let me just look at the table you've got newcastle and brighton on 17 right and there's there's like an 11 point gap back to man U. i'm not even adding them so for those two teams what we're saying is in the last 28 games if they won 15 of their last 28 sorry if they won 19 of their last 28 yeah we only have to win 17, 16. Yeah. 16 yeah. Right? Think, so yeah. It's a... Well, no, I think I think just to sort of go, touch on the first point you make, I think you make a really, really good point about it. I think when people sit in there saying, oh, we're going to go and win the league and stuff, and then if we don't finish in the Champions, at least the Champions League spots, that's failure. I think I think if Man City fans, I'll use that, I always use it, when we're going to win the league this season, and then finished in the champions in the Europa League spots, we'd all be sitting here saying that's failure, right? So if we, we if we want to talk with chest and we go, we're gonna win the league. If we don't, then it, you've got to be critical. It's it's only fair, right? I've said all I think I said all along, I have no real expectations this season. I uh, I stand by my point of saying at the start of the season because I agree this manager, this manager needs time. But I also agree with what uh, Stell's saying because the the goalposts do move. We're ten games in and we've won eight of ten. The goalposts do move. So yes, I think finishing in the Champions League is cons I would say this season very very successful if you base it on the start of the season. But right now, if we don't, I think you you have a very valid point to say we've we've really fallen away. But what I will always say, I always have to, you, and I think you did touch on it a little bit, still, but you caveat anything with circumstances. I think circumstance is such a key one because let's just say we beat Chelsea, but some pulls a hamstring or Madison gets injured. You're, the, the whole sense of everything changes, right? Because if you lose Madison and Son for a substantial amount of time, we, I think our opinions change at a click of a finger, right? I, I then sit there and go, I sit back and go, okay, do you know what? If we just stay, we rein back in our optimism a little bit because we've lost our two best players at the moment. So, of course, think anything caveats happen throughout the seasons. But yeah, if we use it based on right now, on what we've got, 
I think, yeah, I think if you we don't finish in the Champions League this season, based on this moment now, it would be considered failure. OK, Perchi, on that basis then, if Declan Rice gets injured for six months and Arsenal finish fifth, is yeah. that a failure for Arsenal or is it, well, our most expensive no, player got injured? Uh, what, what can we no, because I think they've got, more, well, I think they've, got, they've got more squad depth than us. I don't think he's the... I don't think Declan what, Rice is... Who, who have they got the that can play in that role? Who have they got I that can play in that role? They, they'd revert to last year and put Party in there. Yeah. Well, he's right. injured. He's out. Yeah. Yeah. Look, he's no, out, listen, yeah, but he's... I do agree with you. If Arsenal finish fifth... It doesn't matter who gets injured. If Arsenal finish fifth after finishing second last year, that is an epic failure. Yeah? Yeah. Arsenal 100%. this year for me have to finish... The bare minimum for Arsenal to finish this year is top three. They have to. They were second yeah. last year. The reason mm. I think they were second, I think Liverpool had a little bit of a, a, a dip. I think Liverpool have addressed that dip. I think they've lost one in 29 in all competitions. I think that's not a bad... I wouldn't mind if Spurs had lost one in 29 nil competitions, right? If they don't finish in that top three still, for me, they've had a man. Forget fourth. If they don't finish in that top three yeah. and close to Man City, who, again, I think they're going to win the league, they've had a man. But I would expect this is what they did wrong last year still. We're talking about losing players. It's last year. During that January window... You're thinking you're top, and you're not just top by a little bit. They were like eight or nine points clear. I Go know. and buy a couple of players and really solidify. And what they did was they bought in Trossard, who hardly played. Right, I get it, depth, but they bought in Trossard, who hardly played, and they bought in Kiwiel, who may be one mm. for the future, but wasn't right. This is the difference. If this happened to Man City, right, this is the problem. If Man City lose Erling Haaland for six months, for five months, you know. If there's a window open, Man City are going out there and going, boom, we'll have you. That's the that's yeah, the difference yeah, yeah. between winning the league and not. But the difference between us and them for me is what Perchie's point was there is when I make predictions about where teams are going to finish, I'm factoring in the Sun and Madison effect before it happens. Mm. I'm factoring in where should we finish? I still think one of those players gets a long-term injury, we are screwed. Because... Where if, if, if Spurs no goals without Madison, I don't see hmm. every goal you can think of in the last two months. How many of them didn't involve Son or Madison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. But this is this is this I'm is worried. this is the beauty. Is it not a case as well though that look? I'm starting going off a tangent here. Do do you That's see what... it as failure, Sava? If we don't get top four from here, do you do you see it as failure or not? I was hoping that by hosting, I didn't have to answer these sort of questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> throw us under a bus. Throw you under a bus, I'll just... Do, do, do you know what? What I would say is it would be very disappointing from where we are now. But from what I think of the season in, in general, as long as we made the Europa League, I don't think it would be massive failure. Mm. But I'm not one of these people who's sitting here talking about title challenges still. So for me, in my mind... I'm not dreaming of titles like other people are. And I'm not saying they shouldn't for anyone as a go. Knock yourself right, out. I, think about it, am, but... I, am, am I the only one then on this panel right now that thinks anything but Champions League is failure? Because that's what I think now. Mm. Um, no, I, 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 I would be probably nearer to your side, but I would, I would, I always would, I would always play the caveat card if we lose two key players for long term. At least. Even if one, right. imagine there. there's no get out of jail free card, right? And you had to pick. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> answering answering the question that's have a put. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm saying Champions League. If we don't qualify for it, it is failure. As of yeah. right now, yeah, no, I, I, I no I'm going to agree. No, for a I'm club gonna... for a club of our size and where we should be, I think I think it is with the start we've had away. Right? Has with the, the start, start we've had, had as well. Club of our size and the disappointment of last season as well. And where mm. we are now, I think it's a huge disappointment, huge failure, hundred percent. There's no dressing it up. I think it is. I wouldn't say it's huge. I wouldn't say it's huge. I think. Yeah, but I, it think would be, I think it is because if you look at he, he, look, yeah. if you look at what all the stats say, Perchy, and I, I will let you. Sorry, I will let you have a say in a second. But you know, if we were to miss out, right? Considering every club has finished in the top three or Champions League spots from where we are at the moment i think that's a huge failure so what if like let's okay I'll, I'll i'll throw it i'll throw it back at you here okay i get i get what you're saying 
say we miss out on Champions League by one point, is that can still equal failure? Yeah, yeah, because it doesn't matter if it's one or five points or ten points. But, but, but my point being is, say we get to the last game of the season and we are we're Don't one you? point behind some whoever, and both teams win and we nick they nick it by a point. Are we sitting there saying it's a failure from from the start of what we had at the start yeah, of the season? Perchy has said to you, no team in history has not got top four with this many points after 10 games. We so would be the first record, club great, great ever. Record, right, so that's failure then. That's <laughs> no, failure, I, I, right I, there. I get you. I get you. From that from that perspective, I get it. But my my the biggest thing is, is for me right now is I always try and put a little bit of context. Look who we've played, right? Uh, we still li- listen. We could go on. By the way, we've got Chelsea, Wolves, Man City. Still got to play Villa. Still got to play Brighton. They've got These those are- games as well. Those teams have got those games as well. But those teams have got better squads than us. But they're in more Collect- competition. Uh, they're more. Uh, competition. Let, me, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sit on the. I'm gonna sit on the fence here, just as the, as, as the host. Oh, I think the go. difficulty with yeah. that is right. No, look, look. I'm. I'm. I'm just gonna say to Perchy's point. Look, we have got a more difficult run of games coming up. But what I would say is, whilst I expect us to not have the the just to keep winning, I I don't think we're going to lose all those games. I don't think we're going to win all those games. I do think that will probably be a bit more of the usual win a couple, lose a couple, draw a couple. But what we're saying is, let me put it this way. If Spurs take from the next 10 games, from the next 30 points available, if Spurs took 18 points, right, normally 18 points from 30 games isn't the end of the world, right? 18 mm-hmm. points from 30 games, 20 points, 18 points. What we're saying is that if we did that from our next 10 games, Newcastle and Brighton, to try and catch up from where they are now, needs to win an extra game than us every 10 games, if that makes sense. Right. Every 10 okay, okay, games, I can see it from that perspective. we need to catch up on three points. That's a huge gap. So to Sell's point, of, is it failure from where we are? Is it failure from where we were in the summer? No. Is it failure from the cushion we've given ourselves now? You would have to lean are towards. We, are we yes. counting? Are we counting it as a top five, not a top four? Yes, I think top top five. Five. it says Champions League. Yes, yeah, so from, from that caveat, I'm assuming fifth place gets us Champions League. Is yes. that, I'm, I'm, I believe that so. There, there's, I'm, there's I'm, caveats. I'm not sure what the rules are. There's, there's, it, there's, it's going our luck. We'll finish fifth, and then we all of a sudden don't get it for some crazy reason. But <laughs> listen, I, 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 I get, I get your point. Listen, I think I did. I, I was more judging it on fourth place, and I sit back and go, I, I don't know. I think, I think. Listen, I think we put the what I will say. We put. I us expect in a good top position. four purchase, by the way, not top five. I expect top four now. I think Spurs will but get it does, top four would it make now. a difference if we finish fourth or fifth and we get Champions League? Does it make a match difference? On no, actually? not really, not really. But I think we will get. And top by the four. way, before we're, if people in the comments, before anyone says that, I predict us finish third. Earlier on in the week, I predict us finishing the, the third. Thing so is, the, the thing is, right? Even if well, then you must say it's Champions... failure. That's Sorry, what I was I thinking. I was thinking that as well. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, the flip. Even if fair. it's fifth, right? Even if we finish, that's a good point. Yeah, sir. I'll accept that. Even if fifth spots get, even on? if fifth spots gets you <laughs> Champions League, up. right? It's yeah. And let's say we finish from this position, we finished fifth, but still got Champions League. We'll still be the butt of jokes because people will say you're lucky this season because. Fifth spot gets you Champions League. If it had been any other season, you you know why we'll be the a failure. If that happens, has. Do you know what? If if we had gone from last season finishing eighth and and Kane leaving and being in a mess to this season finishing fourth or fifth and getting Champions League, no one would give a stick. The stick we will get is because we've got so much of our fan base going on to shows, randomly yeah. damping the throats that we're going to win a league. Right, that that is why I don't go on and go. What do you? Mean? Of course, we're winning a league title because for me, what will end up happening is it will take away from what's been. Do, do we all agree? If we get Champions League football again, what a great first year under. Yeah, oh, so bang yeah. on! Bang on. Right. Bang on. So for me, I don't want to take away from that by putting on Harry Kane as well. Page. Without Kane, yeah, massive. With, with letting go of Kane, not buying a striker replacement. Yeah, you know, yeah. new manager implementing new philosophy, new technical director of football, new chief mm. football officer to get top four or five would be amazing. I don't we're want that down and... because people are going, we're going to win the league. Yeah, and then yeah. We finish fifth. yeah. but to do you it know? with the likes of Brighton, Villa and Newcastle also in the mix now, 
as well as your usual big hitters, I think it's even more of an achievement because you've you've you know competed with the likes of those teams as well. Brighton, a fantastic team. Villa, dangerous team. Fantastic. The league is stronger. Team. Newcastle. The stronger, yeah, the league is much stronger. Now you yeah. add to those three, you add the likes of City, Arsenal, Liverpool. It's it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, if imagine if Chelsea and United were on form as well. You've well, got Man 18. United and Chelsea has. They've still got the players on any day to maybe pull out a win as well. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. They've still got the players there to do something. So they're not... 100%. But let me let, let me put it in this, these terms, right? If you look at it, this is our best chance to get back into Champions League. And what I mean by that is next year... If we were to finish in Europa League, by the way, can we get five more subscribers? Come on, let's get five more before the show finishes. Next season, if we do get back into European football, i.e. Europa League or Conference League, whatever it is, next year we're not going to be playing one game a week. Next year we are going to then have to balance the rotation of squad. At the moment, at the moment, that's our... our um, our silver bullet, so to speak, compared to everyone else's, we don't have to rotate. That is our silver bullet. Newcastle, Brighton, Villa, those three in and around us, not talking about the big three, but those three in and around us all have Europa League or Conference League football, right? So this year is the big year to do it. Because if we don't, and then we have to try and do it next year when we're in Europe like everyone else, that's when you're going to see how good our scouting system is. That's when you're going to see how good Ange is for me in terms of rotating. So for me, that's why I've said this year for me is a bit more of a free hit. Next year is the year when we're in Europe where you say, this is the big year. Let's see what we're made of. Anyone agree with that? But don't you think this is now the perfect time to be integrating the younger players so that we're ready for next season? They're ready for next season. Gives us more squad depth. You know, we're talking about the likes of Phillips and stuff, right? Why can't yeah. we bring on start bringing on Phillips? If we if he gets any game time this season, come next season when we're going to have to play double the matches, we're in Europe and everything else, all these cup, cup competitions, they're ready. They're good to go. This is the season where we need okay. to be utilising that. We need to be utilising the younger players, bringing them in, getting them used to the system, getting them used to first-team football. And then when it comes to next season, yes, we can go out and buy a few players, but we've already got established young players that can come in, young, hungry ready to play under Ange. So this season is crucial in different ways, you know, um, in terms of getting players in and, and you know, utilising that one game a week. That, you know, I think it's important. I, I agree we've with got you. Free, Some, got free pass. The flip side to that is people will go, well, because we've only got one game a week, we don't have to do that. And we've got to play our best 11 just yeah. to get back into Europe. I, I'm not saying that's right, Hass. I'm just saying that's what, Either side of the fence will throw, right? No, just has. Do you know what the issue is we've got with what you've said? If we were lingering six seventh, then you'd then you'd say, do you know what? Just integrate the youngsters. We're in a project phase. We're in the build. The fact we're first, and this has just been sprung on us, it's a case of crap. If so we're have we moved on from the project phase, have we well, moved this, on from the project phase? Well, this is the question. Well, this is the question. Because for me, we're still in a project. Right. But like, like, like I was saying earlier, opportunities present themselves to you. What do you do with it? Do you say, right, stay in project phase mode and do what you said? By the way, there's, there's no wrong or right answer. Or something's happened that none of us expected. Do we grab hold of this and make something happen from it? Because if we do that, mm. then you've got to, I'm not going to say scrap the project, but the idea of integrating the youngsters will be detrimental to the opportunity presented. What do no. you do? Yeah. No, I get that. This is this is where you know, that's the I was gonna say sorry, sorry, has that I was just gonna say that's the the million dollar question that is sat on Daniel Lee. Are we gonna have a start like this again next season? I doubt it. That, that's the thing. This I think you, <laughs> I you know, doubt no, it. look still let's let's use a bit of history to argue it. Like look at look at Arsenal. Let's just say I'm not saying it will, we're at Arsenal's position when we get to the first of January. They were what seven or eight points clear at the top. Yeah. Am, am I right? Uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At yeah. one point, they were like nine points yeah, clear. Something... Of yeah, but Perchy, Perchy, the difference here is though, Arsenal were three years into their project. We're three months. Yeah, but, 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 but <laughs> it's but like I'm, I'm, but, but it's still, a proper I'm, here back your, I'm here to back your point up here on this one. Was do you 
scrap it and go, do you know what, guys? This could be the once of a lifetime opportunity that we could go and win a league here. And we go, City, right? Get it out. Let's, City. Go, let's go and get three or four big players in this team now. Let's go and do it. Like, that's the million dollar question, right? No, Listen, we, we, uh, we never did that when we, had, when we had the big managers in. We never did that. So why are we going to do it under, right, has, under Andy now? Has, let me ask you this as a fan. This is what I don't get. All right. Let me ask you this. That's a different question. Will we or won't we, right? But let me ask you this. As a fan, as a, as a Spurs fan, and everyone in the comments, as, a, as mm. Spurs fans watching this show, if in January Spurs are six, seven points, let's say we do an Arsenal with six, seven points clear in January, do you want Spurs to say, go and get three top players and see what we can do with that? Or, hey, don't worry about buying any new players. Bring in the youngsters and stick to the project. As a Spurs fan, what would you want? I want not, to see us do it. I want to see us why, right? I think that's the key one, right? There's no reason why we can't get a mixture of both, though. Bring in another quite Look, Madison's come in, one player that's made a world of difference. You take Madison out of the squad at the moment, right? We're, we're an average team. I don't care. You can tell me any, anything I, you I like, agree. right? Without I Madison, agree. we're an average team. You bring in someone like that, maybe in a different position, maybe in the same position, whatever. Someone that's going to affect that team alongside other young players. What? Why can't we do that? I, I'm just looking at it from a realistic yeah, my question, point of view, my right? Was, but my, my question was, we're, six, we're seven points clear in January. You've got a choice. Stick to the project and keep Operation Youth going or say, hold on a minute. We're seven points clear with 18 games to go. You know go what? and get three Madisons. Go and get me three Madisons. First of all, we know that's not going to happen. We're not no, going to go and get three Madisons. Let's say we can. Right, has. Right, Let's I'll still stick to the project then. There's my answer. Okay. Because because if we was to go <laughs> out and get if we was to go out and get three Madisons, right? Listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> if we were, was was to go out and get three Madisons, right? And it didn't work out how we wanted it to work out, we're now left with those players and we have it hasn't worked out. Yeah, but you, but yeah, but you three, three, Mad project, three, three Madisons the three Madisons are three good players. Well, I wouldn't mind being stuck with three. Well, what I'm saying, what, what if it doesn't work out? It's a big risk. But at least if you're well, sticking think, to the project, do you know you're what? sticking think, to what the, yeah, you're what right. the idea was. There's no guarantees initially. it'll work out. But there's no so guarantees. For me, but... it, what, what were we saying at the beginning of the season? We were saying, you know what? As long as the football's good and there's a clear plan and there's a project in place, I'm happy. That's what we were saying at the beginning of the season. All no. of a sudden, because of where we are, yeah, everyone's now, yeah, we'll get to January, we'll buy this, 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 this. We all know what's going to happen. That's why I'm saying... I'd rather stick to the project, see how far Ange can get us with this squad whilst integrating. Look, I'd rather have young, good, hungry players. Like, look at Brighton, for example. Look at the players that they're bringing in between the ages of 19, 20, 21. But they were never top of the a different situation. They were never in our position. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. But look where they've got to, right, from where they were. They're a totally different position. With They're a much smaller <laughs> club than us. That you know, that for where well, they so are at the moment, aren't we really? more of an Arsenal last year? Like Perchy said, like for me, if if we get mm. seven points clear in January, and we enter that transfer window, in my head, I'm thinking, get top three players, put the projects on hold, and just go for it, go for broke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I think. I think. Do you know what? What I would uh, say, I think. Do you know what? There's, in there's a no sense, wrong or right. There's a, it's opinion, there's a right? little it's bit. Right. No, but there's a, there's a little bit of in the middle isms, right, with both of you. Like the pair of you are actually saying two great points actually what you want to get is you want to get some hungry young players whilst getting a couple of big boys future. you get a couple of big boys but not just for the future i think for the present i think you go and get for the present is 22 well, but... 23 year olds that are i'm not talking about when i say youngsters i'm not talking about signing 16 17 18 year olds i, I need to write down what I was say 22 to... 23 year olds that are ready to jump into this team, right? You're as good. You're as you're as good as you're as good as you are, right? If you you're good, you get in, right? It doesn't matter what age you are. Question: What? Why? Why does? If look, I get it, right? We, we've got to look at this as a long term project. But if we were in a position where you're five, six, seven points clear in January, and you think, God, grab a couple of players. Why does one transfer window have to derail a project completely? Surely you would. Surely you would say, right. Let's bring in a yeah, couple of players. Bob, 
to get us over the line and then you continue with the project <laughs> afterwards. My question is, would they do it? Either way, this is my problem. Would they do it? Yeah. Who would they get? Like who who would we go and get that are top players that get you over the line? But is now club motto to I, there is to do. Just I dare, agree. Do I, I agree. I agree. Go for, this I agree. is the thing. The, the club motto has been to there is to do for God knows how long, right? But have we done that? No. Have we? No. History tells us that when you know we've really needed the players to push on, we haven't done it, or we've brought subpar players. This is why I'm saying to you, I would rather stick to the project. As Ange said when he first took over at the club, right, we want to build for the future so that this club can continually challenge the you trophies can, you can, for the title. Ange, you, can, the other. you can technically do both, right? I think that's the you key. Can, but that's the whole point, point though, Perchie. You can, we know you can. But whether they will is a different question. I can sit down here till next week and say, yeah, we can do both. Yeah, we can get... But, but is he going to do that? But has just to sort of caveat on what Savage just said, was a good point. Who do you, who would you say? Uh, I'll throw it to you guys. Probably probably close to sort of wrapping up. The last bit here was if we had to say three players, what sort what level of player are we getting? Because I think the level we're looking at right now, whether or not we're in a title race or we're not, is a Santiago Jimenez level. I know we used it uh, mentioned him earlier. That level at Feyenoord that's doing really well right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think we when we talk about the level of quality that we're going for. We're not going in for the likes of Ivan Tony because I think he's looking at better options. I don't think we're looking at players like the lad at Napoli. I I will not even attempt to butcher his name. This, we're not looking Ossiman. at the likes of Ossiman at Napoli as well because they're looking at they're looking to go to the teams like Real Madrid. They're not looking to come so, to Tottenham. Let me ask you, Perchi. Players like Tony, uh, um Ossiman. You can say his name. Yes, I can. Um, are those players, are those players data driven players that you need to look up data, or are those players that you can look at and say, yep? I, no, I think the data would probably show their quality football players. Oh, but you wouldn't. But, what I'm what saying saying. Is, but what I'm trying to say is, you wouldn't need to look at the data, would you? Because there's players no, at cool. world football, like elite level, that you look at. I don't need to look at the data. Yeah. I know what these yeah, players I get are. That. Let's but the be fact honest. Is, the fact is, this club are now they they come out before the season and said. We're going to look at data, analyse data to bring in players. That's what I'm going by. So that's what they're obviously trying to do. They're not going to look at, you know. Can I, can I just say, say, let's say top players. So go on, sir. I was just going to say, let's be, I, I think the whole data-driven analysis is great. I don't think every player has to be data-driven. Let's be brutally mm -hmm. honest. I don't believe for one second that Man City's scouting team had to look at Erling Haaland and go, Paul, exactly. yeah, yeah. What, what, how many touches a game? What does he do? I think they've looked at it and gone, how many goals does he score a season? <laughs> yeah. 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 Put him in up right right now. I see this is the problem with the world for me. I see right now that man can score a brace in a game. He can get a hat trick in a game and still all the experts come off of the pitch and go, Yeah, but do you know out of the 24 touches he had only 15 of them laid off to it? He got a hat trick. He, he, he got a hat trick. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter, right? The the key thing here for me is. I think we're getting a little bit carried away, not on this panel, about how well we've done. And I'm going to show you because we are going to wrap up the show in a couple of minutes. I want to get some super chats and I want to show a couple of comments that I've just been saving up, which do make me think that people are getting a little bit carried away. OK, so please bear with me, guys and girls. I'll start with the super chats. Uh, big up to Love's Music, my main man on Insta. How are you, bro? Hope you're well. I said we absolutely 100% have to go for it. Nothing to lose. Love it. To dare is to do. Big up to you. Um, we have got Sean Gerrard in the chat who has said, great content, guys. If Tottenham have the mirror season to Arsenal last season, we would forever hear bottlers. We bottled the Leicester season and we were never in the league. Oh, we would hear it. We will only hear it if we keep telling everyone that we're in a title race. That's what I'm saying. Keep your feet on the ground. Let's just go under the radar and do it. But hey, Listen, each to their own. Thank you, Sean. Really, really appreciate your super chat. It's very, very generous of you. Um, super chat here from Matt Coppin, who has said, Umbuermo from Brentford all day long, wide and scores. Sure. For me, I, I think is a no-brainer of a footballer man. for me. Um, yeah. Give me him over any one of our wide men all day, every day. I completely agree with you, Matt. Um, and the last super chat here was from Jason. I'm going to try this. Jason Sadigian. 
I'm going to try that and say, yes. don't forget the quotas, boys. Barely met. I think this was in relation to um, uh, when we're signing players. I think that we're going to have a problem at some point. Quote, he's right. I'm grown, but we won't. We're going to get. We'll go into that next week. But thank yeah. you so much, Jason, for that. Sell Eric that. Dyer. Sell Cessing Young. <laughs> yeah, well, well, this is the worry, isn't it? Um, but. Um, and a couple of comments I wanted to bring up. Um, first of all, I'm just going to graze past this one, but I thought this was a really interesting point for all those saying that Porro has been brilliant this year. John George said, Pedro Porro is the defender who has been dribbled past the most in the Premier League this season. What does the panel think? Doesn't surprise me. I do not think this guy is very good defensively. I've said it before. I think he's better this year at it, but I still think he looks very, very shaky in a back four. Very vulnerable, yeah. He's improved, he's, but he's the vulnerable. Only, the only thing I would say on that, I'd be interested to see statistically what his recovery is. Because the one thing, the one thing I will skip horror for, his recoveries are better. Because it just, sure. but that's more physical because he's got more pace, right? Sure. But if I'm a winger, I'm looking at that stat and going, I know I'm yeah, running out of pace. Um, so, John, uh, George, thank you for that. Um, Wayne Holland came in. Big up to you, Wayne. Uh, your Leicester team are absolutely smashing it. Now, let's hope you guys aren't Spursy because you guys are already 14 points clear. <laughs> uh, They've got Harry Wood. points clear of playoffs. That's how well you're doing. Has said, does it concern you that if you, uh, if you qualify for the Champions League? Sorry, if, does it concern you qualify for the Champions League players again you don't oh don't sorry if we qualify for the Champions League that we don't sign Champions League players again it always worries me is my short answer I've never seen us get in the Champions League and actually go boom 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 and take some top players but that's just me quickly guys just a quick few seconds each yeah I think I'll be honest yeah I think we're at the same situation where we're we're hoping it gets better let's see um yeah that always has been a massive worry. When we get there, we never seem to push on there. But look, um, yeah. for me, uh, one 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 game a week. We're doing all right so far. We're riding our luck very much, but we just got to continue as we are and hope that Ange keeps on rotating these players um, when, like he has been recently. Still, I mean, I know, I know. Obviously, your thoughts are the owners. It's it's a concern every every time we get Champions League, right? Is we never really go out and go, yeah, there's two or three top Champions League players. Yeah, look, they don't back Ange. Um, it's Levy out, protest start yep. up again, the banners are coming out, you name it. So, yep. I'll keep it simple. Um, last few here. Um, Michael was said, question for the panel. Why is Villa... Villa? Blah, 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 blah. Villa? Who, who are Villa? <laughs> Why is Villa a difficult proposition for Spurs? What do they do good? that will make it tough? I'll, I'll answer first. It's all right. For me, going forward, they've got one of the best attacks <coughs> in the Premier League. Their front three against the way we are open at the back, I, I would be worried that they're going to create a lot of chances. And unlike the teams like Luton, like Fulham, like Sheffield United, these guys will put the ball in the back of the net. There's there's my worry. This is a very good Aston Villa team. Please make no bones about that. Yeah. Remember what? that... Um, Go on, go on, Pedro. You go on. No, go on. what I would say is, is just going back to a couple comments ago. Pedro Porro is one of oh, the most oh, run, you know. dribble pass fullbacks in the league, and against an Aston Villa team that have the likes of Leon Bailey, um, Musa Diaby, Maniolo, Diaby, Watkins. The, yeah, yeah, they've yeah. got pace out wide and McGinn. Yeah, McGinn, yeah. I think, has been a brilliant player, and Ollie Watkins, by the way, is absolutely sensational. Diaz. So, yeah, yeah, they got good players. They're think, a good think, team. I think, that 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 for me yeah, is when be. when we talk about a difficult proposition, we go back and look at statistics against our fullbacks. There, there, that's what I'm going to say on that one. <laughs> no, great. Uh, has quickly has yeah, no, no, um, Perchu Perchu read my notes. Um, I was going to say the same thing, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, Stealth. Anything else to add to that? Yeah, I think they should also be worried about us as well, as much as we're worried about them. I think their home <laughs> record. I think their home record is. It's outstanding at the moment under Unai Emery. I, 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 I am actually concerned when we have to go away to Villa. I think, yeah, I think I, we I really agree. lose that game. I really think we could lose that game because it's a stereotypical home, portrait just, card, isn't it? They're right. just picking off people for fun at home. Yeah. They're literally disposed. What they did to Brighton was frightening. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah. 
I honestly, I I look at their. Fr- I, I've, I've said before, if you take Aston Villa's two wide men and put them with Son, I will stop believing more in a title challenge. If you give me yeah. those two wide, the RB, what a signing at forty million. Um, the last couple. Um, this one I've never disagreed with a comment more than I have with this one. Sorry, guys. Um, Bowen is not on the level for Spurs. Good shout, like uh, Jared Bowen in our team on the right wing. Isn't that everything we're crying out for? A goal-scoring oh. right-sided forward that creates yeah. as well. I, yeah, it's, I, it's, a wild, it's a wild. It's, that's a wild comment, Mark. That's you know yeah, what, Jared, I'm gonna, Mark Changa, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to agree with you. Only when Jared Bowen reaches the age of 50 and is not good enough to play for Spurs because that guy is absolutely <laughs> what we need to yeah. play. Oh, yeah. Jared no, Bowen is he's phenomenal. Player. Sorry, but yeah. he's phenomenal. And yeah, yeah, that you had an absolute stinker on that comment. No disrespect. Yeah, I, 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 I literally man. just looked already this season, already this season in the Premier League, he's got seven goal contributions in 10 games. What, what, what I like I, about... Oh, sorry, go. Hang on. <laughs> No, sorry. <laughs> in 10 Premier League games. He's got two goal contributions in two games in the Europa League, and he's got two goal contributions already in two League Cup games. So already this season, mm. the guy has got 12 goal contributions in all competitions from the right wing. For me, that is everything we are lacking from Kulu, Richarlison, Brian Hill, whoever. That is spot on for what we need, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Just he's never well, leaving West Ham. No, but what I was no, going I mean, to I was going to add on the Bowen thing though. What I it, a lot what not about his even about his ability on the pitch. His mental ability is brilliant because he's taken on the talisman role really. Like Declan Rice, their captain, their leader goes. I think Jared Bowen is is sat in that role and gone. I'll be the leader of this. When this team needs a player to get us out of trouble, we'll, I'll be that guy. And I think. Yesterday showed it. I thought he was outstanding against Arsenal. So scored the really winner in the European Cup for them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when we're saying, Morla saying, uh, this is not normal for Jared Bowen. I mean, just two years ago, he got 24 goal contributions in 36 Premier League games for West Ham. So when we're saying this isn't, uh, again, we're doing that thing where if this was a Spurs player, we'd be yeah. talking about this player for Ballon d'Or and <laughs> I don't understand. This is everything Tottenham need on that right wing. But, hey, yeah. it is what it is. If people don't think he's good enough, then I think we're in delusion again about how good ours are. Yeah. Um, and the last two are about the same player. The last two comments. Um, I'll read them both before we answer them. Um, Paul Lee has said, to be honest, we do not know if we will do well without Madison. Ange will likely have a plan um, for that and we would play slightly differently. Um, so if anyone can tell in the background, I'm just bringing up uh, James Madison's details. One second. And um, the next point on that was Ellie saying, we are not average of that matters. We're less creative. Yes. But with VDV, Romero, Basuma, Saar, Sonny, Vicario, Doji, Kulu, Johnson are average. Um, listen, I'm going to just say this. James Madison already in 10 Premier League games has got eight goal contributions. Nearly every time I see anything good coming from Spurs, it's James Madison. Liverpool, Agreed. it was James Madison who created for Sun. Arsenal, James Madison with a two assist for, for Sun. Um, the assist for Van der Ven in the Luton game was James Madison's footwork. Crystal Palace, both goals came from James Madison again, was involved in both goals. I, I feel like people are not understanding it. You take this guy out, we're back to last year where there's no creation in the team. Yeah. I, I don't. I think people are... When we're going to start chucking in Kulu, Johnson, Saar, none, none of these people are creative for me. So... Uh, I, yeah, I say it all the time. Everything good at this football out. club but an offensive standpoint comes through James Madison. It's, it, it shouldn't be a debate. I think you look at him, this guy is absolute class, right? Everything good comes through him. Yeah, I mean, without your orchestrator, there's no music, and without yeah. him, there's no goals. So, okay. look, and and, um, and he's just a and, denominator in everything. Yeah, just, just quickly, when we say this, I, when we say this, uh, yeah, it's Sava, we did the same with Kane, but yeah, we replaced Kane with James Madison. Like, like if yeah. if James Madison is out, okay, I'll ask you boys this question: If James Madison picked up a knock tomorrow, touch wood that he doesn't, everybody, right? Who? 
who replaces him and does the job that James Madison that's, does on that's Monday a night? Horrible, horrible There's question. No There's no one else. <laughs> there isn't anyone. Yeah. Uh, I don't think people understand how good James Madison is. Yeah. I think <laughs> everything Tottenham do goes through that man. He, well, let me ask you this question oh, then. Um, oh. I'll, I'll caveat that question with this question, right? Do you me. think we spoke about signing a left winger, a striker, centre back, whatever? Would you prioritise signing a replacement for Madison? Not as a priority. Not as a priority. If you can Not get, one, if you can, if we're if placing a lot of importance on Madison, and rightly so. If, if what, but if what, I think we're we, I think we're so weak in other areas. I I agree. By the way, I think. I think He's the other like people... player. Sorry, people... sorry, just quickly. I keep seeing yeah. this in the chat, Hurchy. Everyone's saying Benton Core, but Benton Core's mm. not the same footballer as James Madison in any. No. I don't know. Uh, just me. I don't think he's anywhere near that type of player. I think he's a centre mid, isn't he? But I, th I think, I think, yeah. No, I, I agree with you on the Benton Core one. He's not a ten. Um, but this is it. What about Lacelso? Does Lacelso get eight goal contributions in ten games or whatever? You no. like, I'm nowhere near right. I think you you'll probably average two every every five, and that isn't helpful, right? I think that's the problem. But we've seen enough of Lascelles; so that's the issue. But I do I think we need to get someone new, maybe in the summer. Doesn't it go to show? Has to your point? So we will wrap up the show in a minute. We've gone half an hour more than we wanted to. But listen, when a show's doing when a show, I think everyone's enjoyed it. So yeah, um, doesn't it go to show though? When we say like this, has we do need cover at centre half? We do need forwards, not cover. We need forwards. We do need midfielders, creative midfielders. As so, I I still think people are going to get. I still think we need another two fullbacks because I think the drop off mm. from a doggy to Davis we saw was was horrific. Um, yeah, I think the other side as well. Hundred percent. That's why I don't get carried away. Has I think we've got a lot of work to do. It's it's. Yeah. I, look, I reiterate what Stell said earlier on in the show. We do need an extra player in every position. You know, two players in every single position. Right now, uh, let me put it to you guys. How many positions do we have in the team right now that has two players in that position? Two. <laughs> All right, two. maybe maybe what the what right wing? Striker. Um, well, Where? Benton Core. Okay, Benton I'd, Core I'd say midfield. yeah, mid, midfield. I'd say I think and midfield then, would be the only one I would say we would. So like for like. Yeah, just. I think Benton just about. Yeah, and then I, John think, I, think, on the left, I think we're it. I think we're still one off. I think we're still one off to get to the level we want. Mm. But I think if we if we're talking about drop off, I think that's the closest from the the first two to the second two, if we want to call it that. I think that's yeah. the closest gap. Yeah, look, guys, um, let's leave it there. Do you know what the beauty of football discussion is? We'll be back next Thursday, and by then we would have played Chelsea. We might have some answers to some of these questions. We might not. Um, just last thing I want to do in the, in the next 30 seconds, all I want is a score. I don't want any dialogue on it. Chelsea, Monday night. I want predictions. I'm going to start with you, Perchy. I know your answer, but I'm going to get it from you anyway so everyone can hear it. Tottenham at home's Chelsea. What's the score going to be? 2-1 Tottenham. 2-1 Tottenham. Haas. 3-2 Tottenham. Stell. 2-1 Tottenham. And I'm going to go with 3-2 Tottenham like Haas as well. So we're either all going to be very happy next week or we're all going to have egg on our face. Um, listen, uh, Stell, thank you so much. If you don't know where to find Stell, I'm sure you do. He's not very quiet. You, you'll know about him on the internet. Um, <laughs> go and follow Tottenham away. Stell, thanks for helping us get this show off the ground. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, great. Good show. Looking forward to it. Um, anyone watching, I'll be going on to my channel straight after this. So if you want more, come over to Tottenham away for another show. Uh, it's a bit different to this one. It's more of a Tottenham Arsenal rivalry show. So, And I've set the redirect. So everyone, over yes. when you get over there, smash in the word Savaraid so everyone knows that you've come from here. Show your support. Show some love. Uh, Hass, thanks, mate. I really appreciate mm. it. Um, really pleased that tonight's gone. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm looking forward to the next one next week. And um, yeah, it's been a great show. And thank you to the chat and everyone that's got involved tonight as well. Mm. Yeah, I was, Perchie, I was going to say, listen, I'm not going to say thank you to you. You're part of the channel now. You don't get that. Um, but listen, the, I think the chat has been brilliant. I think the format's been great in terms of 15-minute questions, apart from the last one that went on a bit. We'll, we'll bring it back next week. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the likes. Please subscribe on your way out. The channel mm. is only as good as the people that subscribe. 
please subscribe. Subscribe to everyone on the show. Much love. And as always, come on, you Spurs.